And we're ready to play football. Vinnie Sutherland is waiting to receive it along with Chris Clapton and John Anderson kicks it off for the Washington Huskies. It's a very high kick looking up into a bright sky. Vinnie Sutherland at the 14 yard line and he'll come up short of the 20 on the return. So the AT&T starting lineup for the Purdue Boilermakers now quarterback Drew Brees surely the right man in the right system as he's rung up record after record. He has also this year run for more yards than Marcus Tuiasosopo has the backs and receivers hail back as a stocky guy and uh, he's from Texas as is Drew Brees now Purdue's got a lot of folks from Texas on this uh, football team and you're going to hear Texas ringing out as the day goes along. But it's first down just short of the 20 yard line on the first snap for the white shirted Boilermakers. And uh, Drew Brees rolls, slips, and falls. Beat the rock from under him back on the 15 yard line. So there's a loss on the play. Back inside the 15 at the 11 is where they'll put it. Now, we told you the tailback is a stocky sophomore, Montreal Lowe from Texas. He can burn a hole. Uh, Benny Sutherland's not too big. Neither is Seth Morales, but very good. It's a pitch and catch offense. The offensive front, remarkable performance in protecting their quarterback, and they are more than pushers. These guys can run block, and the left tackle, Matt Light, is an All-American. So now the Boilermakers start out in the hole after the feet went out from under their quarterback. They force him to run now as he pulls and throws to the sidelines. Throws about the original line of scrimmage. A.T. Simpson, a junior out of Indianapolis, made the catch for them. And he is up across the 25 to near the 27-28. So he's a little bit short of the first down. Keith, this is a wide open, fun offense. It's basketball on grass. Football's flying all over the place again. It's critical today, the time of possession to move the chains, get first downs. This is a great scramble by Breeze, and all of a sudden he locates his man who's wide open. They've got a shot at the first here. Don't make it. Good close by Washington, and they'll be running to the football aggressively this afternoon. But it gives you an idea of what the Husky secondary and I are looking at for the rest of the afternoon. Breeze again rolls out again. It's light protecting and they force him wide. He's looking nothing there. He tries to run the ball and he stepped out of bounds just short of the 25 yard line as the Huskies put him on his back and uh, the Boilermakers are going to have to put the ball in the air with the foot. It's a great lick by Anthony Kelly who's starting in front of Williams at that outside linebacker spot. He had a shot at Breeze. He took it put him on his back. He's going to say, hey, we're going to be coming after you all day. We want Breeze to have his head on a swivel and looking for us. In the punt now is Scott Kurz. K-U-R-Z is his name. Toure Butler is waiting for the Huskies, standing back inside his 40 at about the 42. Washington's going to have good field position. Snap was high. The kick is away, and it's a good one. It's a high-hanging spiral that is caught by Butler, and he is put away quickly, but too quickly by Vinnie Sutherland. There will be a flag on it, and it'll cost the Purdue five yards. Jumped into the halo. He's got to stay outside the two-yard circle, and all of a sudden he was in there, didn't give him enough room. That'll cost him. You know, it's still, this serves a purpose. Washington will have great field position, but again, you get a great lick like that early, and it really gets their attention. Listen to it. That's football, smash mouth football. Well, it was also perhaps uh, not a very good decision by Butler because he could have lost the ball in that circumstance because uh, they were looking right down the barrel at him, and he certainly should have been able to see him and call a fair catch. But you know, that's the purpose of that two yard halo. Even if he catches that ball, they're still supposed to give him room to make That's the catch right. and avoid the injury. All right, here come the Huskies for their first snap. The ball is just beyond the 35-yard line. Tuiasa Sopo is collared a yard short of the line of scrimmage. At quarterback, you've got an old-fashioned kind of football player in the AT&T AT &T starting lineup for the Washington Huskies. You just show him the place and tell him the time, and he'll come wearing whatever you want. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. He's a tough guy. He, he wills this team up and down the field. And unlike Breeze, where they use the pass to set up the run, Washington will use the legs of Tuiasa Sopo. They'll use the run to set up his pass. Second down, 11. Neither one of the quarterbacks getting a very uh, dramatic start in this ball game. Tuiasa Sopo rolling out the shoot, coming past his way to the sideline. It's caught, but didn't amount to much. It's over on the sideline. So the backs and receivers now for the Huskies. They're beat up at these positions. Braxton Clemens starting at tailback. 
Rich Alexis and Willa Hurst will play with sore shoulders. Justin Robbins has a sore shoulder. Todd Elstrom a sore leg. The tight end, Jerry Stevens, is healthy. The offensive front, there are five 300-pounders here, and they, I expect today, will try to pound away as the game wears on. In third and long situations, Keith, with Washington, look for the tight end, Jeremy Stevens. He's six foot seven. He's got an advantage in height, and Tuiasa Soko has to put the ball high. On third and nine, pressure. Tuiasa Soko breaks the pressure, throws the ball downfield, and the pass is incomplete, but there's a penalty flag, and it's called against uh, Chris Clopton, a five foot seven inch cornerback trying to defend Justin Robbins, a six footer. They look for Stevens. He was covered. They went deep. He was open for a second, but they now have to decide if that ball was catchable. They apparently have decided. Here's the scramble. He's looking right now for Stevens, but he's got a lot of pressure. He scrambles out as he does so well, finds the deep receiver. Was this ball catchable? I don't think so. But they ruled it was, and so they move him down. It's a 15-yard penalty, remember, in college football, and a first down. The ball is on the Purdue side of the field for the first time today for Washington in possession at the Boilermaker 48-yard line. Clemens, the tailback, runs into the pile and will get down to the 45-yard line. Defensively for the Purdue Boilermakers, it is a quick athletic group. The tackles Terrell and uh, Mitrione weigh in in the 280s, and they are really active people. The linebackers, along with the safeties, make up the heart of the defense. You need to know that there are five freshmen in this defensive unit, but the season's over now. There are no more freshmen. Good size at safeties, but Chris Clopton, I told you, was only 5'7". Coaches say he's a pit bull, but he's still only 5'7". Yeah, and speed is the biggest asset of this defense. Second down and eight. Ball thrown to the sidelines. It is Jeremy Stevens, the tight end. Stevens is a 6'7", 255-pound sophomore out of Olympia. He's a very agile tight end, very quick for a guy that size. He's a problem maker for the Boilermakers, and they know it. They're preparing, knowing that Stevens is going to have a big part in this game plan. Not only is he tall, he can run, and after he catches it, he can elude a lot of tacklers. That's good coverage and a good tackle, but he's going to cause some problems later. Number 14, different number for a tight end. Nobody behind Tui Asasopo now as Conniff comes out in motion. He can catch the ball, too. Tui goes to the outside now. There are two men after him. Now he throws and then completed down the field to Pat Reddick, the junior out of Newberry Park, California, at the 20-yard line. So that's the agility of Tui Asasopo that makes you commit. And then all of a sudden, bang, he's got a target. You know, we've seen him so often, Keith. He's not the best passer in the conference. He's not the best runner, but definitely the most dangerous. They cannot keep him in the pocket. He feels the pressure again. It's almost instinctive. He rolls, and once he rolls, now they've got to be concerned with the run. When they come up, then you find your receiver. There he is, Riddick. He's got the first down. They move the chains. This offense scored 30 points eight times this year. It is first down from the 20-yard line on the Purdue side of the field for the Washington Huskies. Option play. It's the beer left, and Tui Asasopo will go down to the 15-yard line. The first play of the ball game was called today by Peggy Watson. Peggy Watson, who was a longtime associate in the football department at Washington for Don James, for Jim Lambright, and for Rick Neuheisel. She passed away last Friday, but the first play was called for her. And you know what it was, Keith? She loved to see the ball in Tui Asasopo's hands, get him on the corner. And that's exactly what they ran, the same play we showed you in the open, and he ran it well. And they called it peg left and peg right. And it was a good call, Peg. May you memory live forever. Handed over the left side to Pat Conniff, the fullback. Bangs in there, got a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And now across the field, you've got a flag. Take a look at the Dell game solutions for Washington. We mentioned time of possession is critical. They want to keep Ruiz off the field, so they want to shorten the game, melt the clock, move the chains, and they're doing that right now. Tuiasa Sopo has to spread the wealth. He's doing that. He can't do it all himself. He has to get Stevens involved. He has to get Clement as running back and Alexis in the game. He's got to get everybody involved in their game plan. 
That's an offside, offside penalty. By the defense, five-yard penalty. That's a first down. So that's a, it's a big mistake by the Boilermakers because it gives Washington a first down. It's going to put the football right on the 10-yard line, first and goal. Keep in mind, Purdue has not been in the Rose Bowl since the 1960s. Right now, their hearts are pounding through their chest. They've got cotton mouth right now. They've, got, know, they've got to adjust. Last time they were here, Timmy, candy bars were a nickel, and Frank was singing Strangers in the Night. <laughs> the point is, right now, they've got to settle down. They've got to take this first, first blow by Washington and settle down to get in their game plan and not panic. Now let's see what this great big old offensive front can do for the Huskies. Conniff is the man moving. Tuiasa Sopo looking to throw. Passes away underneath to Stevens, the tight end. And Stevens battles his way to the goal line. The ball comes out, and they're going to say what? He was down inside the one. His knee Ooh. hit. Well, an extra effort there, trying to fight his way into the end zone, almost cost him the football. There was a freshman safety, Stuart Schweikert, that laid a lick on him and almost took the ball away. Keith, I've made the point twice, and I will throughout the day. This guy is the biggest threat outside of Tuiasa Sopo, and they're going to use him all day long. He's a great receiver. He gets upfield. He's a tight end who can run. He's six foot seven. He got all the way down to the one. I'd just run Tuiasa Sopo on the quarterback sneak here and get the six on the board. Willie Hurst is in the game, but he's hold. I would imagine Tui takes this one. Oh, he gave it away to Conniff, the fullback. There's a flag. And there's a flag. I don't know why you have to hand the ball off. They need it four inches. I agree with you, but you know, that's a great story. That's Tui Sopo giving it off to his boyhood friend, Pat Conniff. He wants to share the wealth. They're calling the flag against Purdue, looks like. At least the Huskies are begging the case there. Well, you can't get any closer to the goal line. Gained two inches on the penalty. Oh, what a great story he is. All those years, one winning season. Offside, defense, half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. He comes in and takes him to four straight bowls. Keith, that's already the fourth penalty against Purdue. That's well, nerves. They know they've got to be aggressive in attack, though, because they're outsized. Yeah, but emotion gets in the way of concentration. Curry keeps it this time, pitches it outside, and touchdown. Braxton Clemens walked in. Well, it may not have been pretty, and it may not have been fancy, but it counts. His timing is impeccable. He knows they're looking for him on the corner. He reads so well. His decision-making is so solid. He read that defensive end, came to him. He pitched it to the pitch man who was wide open and just walked in. Use about four and a half minutes on that possession, too. Eight plays, 64 yards, five, actually 5'11 on that possession. John Anderson out of Boynton Beach, Florida will try the point out of Cody Pickett's hole. It's up. It's good. And so the Washington Huskies strike here in the first quarter and stick it in the end zone in their first possession. AT&T's broadband technology can carry your company's voice, video, and data around the world at speeds over 2 billion bits per second.
The mole will befriend you. The mole will double cross you. Who is the mole? The mole will earn your trust. The mole will lie to your face. Who is the mole? Seven to nothing. The Washington Huskies got on the board first here in the first quarter with 8.33 to go. Benny Sutherland and Chris Clopton uh, will go back for Purdue. John Anderson will kick it off. Anderson with a big leg. Benny Sutherland had the first reception to start the ball game as Anderson kicked it to him. He is not that big, 5'9", but he's, he's thick, 194 pounds, and he too is from Florida. Drew Brees getting ready to come on. He has looked very nervous to me. He needs to settle down. On the other hand, you mentioned Washington wasn't pretty, and yet Tui Asasopo, 4 for 4, 36 yards on that drive. Here's the strength of Anderson's leg. Back into the end zone, 6, 7 yards deep. And it'll come out to the 20. Here's the Husky defense now. Number 70, nose tackle Larry Triplett is Purdue's biggest worry. He is a disruptor. He'll probably be double teamed most of the day, and that opens opportunities for others. The linebackers uh, play like defensive ends. Farms and Kelly are like arrows off the perimeter. Front seven are the key for the Huskies' defense. Secondary, well, any secondary against Drew Brees is going to have a long afternoon. These people can play, though. True freshman Carruthers replaced Curtis Williams at that free safety position. You mentioned Larry Triplett. He is an outstanding player. He's going to try to line up as much as he can on Ian Allen. He thinks he can beat Allen, and so they'll slide him over that side of the center, like right now. See him yeah. moving? Yeah, he moved about a year ago. Allen handled him all right. In fact, got a little daylight as the ball comes into the stack of Montrell Lowe from Laporte, Texas. And Montrell finds a couple of yards. The temperature down on the field is warm. It's, well, probably in the 90s, right on the surface of the field. But as the afternoon goes on and the angle of the sun changes, it will cool off dramatically. Keith, as you did those starting lineups, I can't help but think when Purdue plays well, the offensive line plays well. When the offensive line plays poorly, Purdue plays poorly. It's hard to believe all those passes. Breeze was only sacked seven times this whole year. Second down and eight. Out of the shotgun. Breeze very quickly. Boom, boom. Man's got it. He's got a first down. It is John Standiford, a freshman from Monrovia, Indiana. Here's a look at our Tostitos team comparison. Pretty interesting team comparison, too. If you look by sacks, Washington's had 33 of them, and that's with Tui Osasopo being as mobile as he is. But here's what we were just talking about. Breeze has been sacked only seven times this year. All the Purdue quarterbacks only eight times all year. To me, that is incredible. The football has been moved just short of the 35, where it's a first down for the Boilermakers. The backup quarterback today, incidentally, is David Edgerton, a senior from Garden City, Kansas Community College. He's working out of the shotgun. Very quick release. Five just tight end. He voted the top tight end of the country and got the Mackey Award. Tim Stratton, a junior from Oak Brook, Illinois, and another first down. We talked a lot about Stevens on the other side being 6'7". Stratton, as you mentioned, the John Mackey Award winner. Here's the penalty, Tim. Offsides by the defense. That penalty is refused. First down. But the point I was going to make is Stratton also figures big in the game plan. He is the guy that is six foot four, 252 pounds. He got everybody to jump. They flexed him out to the right, and he makes the catch. He's extremely smart finding the soft, open area. Wild man to the team, too. He's the fun maker on that football team. From the 41 yard line of Washington, Breeze getting pressure sacked. Well, that's eight. So the Huskies penetrate Daryl Daniels, inside linebacker. You get involved and start double teaming triplet now. That's going to open the door for Daniels and Madavi, and Daniels came walking right through it. Well, just as we tell you that he's only been sacked seven times all year, here they come, and they bring it right up the middle. They try to overload. Look at this. They run a little quick stunt. Here comes Daniels, 24, finds the open area and makes the sack. They call him double D, as you mentioned, but here's the deal. Rick Neuheisel calls him the piano guy. Says he runs like he's got a piano on his back. He's not fast, but he's smart and he's aggressive. Second down and 16 now for Purdue. Working out of the shotgun. Breeze hands the ball off. Penalty flag was thrown. The play goes to the right side with low carrying. And he might have uh, teased the Huskies into the neutral zone. The 
he did. Let me give you the officials. They're from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Jack Childress, we told you, the referee, Rosario Amato, the umpire, Bud Elliott, the headlinesman, Ted Jackson, the line judge, Daryl Harrison, the side judge, John Armstrong, the field judge, Virgil Valdez, the back judge, and Ron Cherry is your alternate. So from one coast to the other, they have come. Here's the difference right there. Four penalties, 25 yards. It's second down, 11 now for Purdue. Gives the ball back to Lowe, and the Huskies eat him up right on the 45-yard line. When we finish up here in Pasadena today, it'll be Oregon State and Notre Dame in the first ever meeting of these two schools, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, right after the opening game of the Bowl Championship Series, which is this one, the Rose Bowl. I think that'll be a terrific football game over at the Fiesta Bowl today. We've seen both teams, and Notre Dame would make many mistakes. The Oregon State is a full bore, wide open, let her rip football team. Drew Brees with time, looking around, going big. He's got a man in the corner. It's incomplete, overthrew him. Seth Morales, a sophomore from Indianapolis, running under the ball. I'll tell you what's pretty interesting that Washington that time went to a zone blitz and got everybody back and had two guys that were playing free in the back of that zone. 14, 15 guys in the huddle, they're substituting from the field. You'll see when they run it, you'll see 41 drop out of there. Here's, he was up at the line of scrimmage. They're in that zone blitz. He throws it out of bounds, good well, defense. The receiver's Confused running out of bounds bit. anyway. He, he had disqualified himself by running out of bounds for about 12 yards. That's correct. High snap over the head of the punter. Goes back and covers the ball at the 25-yard line. Tim Stratton snapped it. The ball went sailing over the punter's head. Travis Dorch is the place kicker, and the punter is Scott Kurtz. And uh, Kurtz, that chance, couldn't handle it. It was just too high. For if it had been Dorch, the place kicker, he's 6'6". Six, six. He'd have made the catch. So Purdue makes another mistake. We've got a timeout in the first quarter at the Rose Bowl with the Huskies leading seven to nothing. Introducing the new 200 horsepower Chrysler Sebrings. Sedan, convertible, and coupe. They beg to be driven. This time of year's tough on the guys, so motivation's key. Come on, Bowman, move it, let's go! Sometimes you need to push them. Let's go, buddy! Pump those legs! This is the big one, the best time to buy sale at Sears. Get 0% financing with no interest and no payments until 2002 on all home appliances over $399. Take this Kenmore side-by-side -side refrigerator and get free delivery. Sell in soon, so you better. Move it! I got places to go! Sears, proud sponsor of the BCS and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by AT&T, proud sponsor of the 2001 Rose Bowl game. AT&T, boundless. Chrysler, we're reinventing the passion for driving. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, move your money, get well connected. And Sears and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. Huge mistake by the Boilermakers. Keith, you were asking me if it's the heat, if it's sweat, it's not. You can see he's got a good grip on the ball. That's the adrenaline flow he's got right now. He's too pumped up. 
Right now, Purdue has to settle down. They're making mistakes like this. All that is is nerves, adrenaline, too much strength. It had nothing to do with sweat. You can see the grip he had on the ball, but they've got to settle down. Well, they put the Washington Huskies in position to uh, make their mountain a little higher, I'll tell you, because uh, at the 25-yard line, first down, and Drew Brees on the sidelines and on the phone. Here's, Here's the big guy, Stevens. Uh, he drops straight back. He's coming. Gets it away. And it is incomplete. He threw it away. Once you get outside the tackle in college football, you can throw the ball in the seats if you want to. You know, that's a good point. You look at both of these guys, Keith, and, and you and I talked about this at great length this whole week. Breeze and Tui Asasopo are probably two of the most cerebral quarterbacks you'll ever find. They study the game, they're students of the game, they know the rules, and they utilize the rules. That's certainly one they both know. They will not take sacks if they can help it. Second down and 10 from the Boilermaker 25 yard line. Nobody behind him. Up the middle he goes. He's a big guy down to the five yard line. First and goal. He puts Stuart Swigert, the safety on his back. And he's got a first and goal at the five. Every guy on that offensive line outweighs the Purdue defensive line by 40 pounds. Now watch the push off this line of scrimmage as soon as the ball is snapped. There's the trap. There's the play. It's a counter, actually. He cuts out behind the guard and makes a great play out of it. It's a very nice job up front by the 300-pound phrase and the 335-pound ward to open that hole. Tuyasa Sopo keeps it. Touchdown. He's warming up. That's his shoe that he's carrying as he goes to the bench looking for some shade. Now here's John Anderson trying to make it. 14 to nothing. And uh, four minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. The Washington Huskies lead Purdue by a score of 14 to nothing. trained all year for this. I have some strange training methods, but they work for me. It's the best time to buy sale at Sears. We're number one in treadmills, and right now, they're all on sale. Sears, proud sponsor of the BCS and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. Responsive Chrysler Sebring Performance Sedan. Proof that it's not the destination, it's the drive. One more time now. now, lease the Chrysler Sebring LX Sedan for $259 a month. I've trained all year for this. I have some strange training methods, but they work for me. It's the best time to buy sale at Sears. We're number one in treadmills, and right now, they're all on sale. Sears, proud sponsor of the BCS and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. This is the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. The 87th playing of the Rose Bowl game in Pasadena. John Anderson kicking off now for the Washington Huskies. Purdue has Benny Sutherland and Chris Klopp. The deep people, 14 and 23, respectively. That's Klopp right there. And here's Mr. Anderson. He's going to drop 
this one a yard short of the end zone to Clapton. Pass, Burner. Penalty flag. Clapton tackled at about the 35, 36 yard line, but the flag was thrown back around the 20. And I do believe it came from the referee, Mr. Jutes. Purdue's one mistake after another so far. That's a holding call against the Boilermakers. Keith, let's take another look at the touchdown because Washington is breaking tendencies. Down tight like this, goal line, they give it to the fullback nine times out of ten. But here's your fake, and everybody knows the tendencies, so they're going after Connor. Look at the fake now, and look at the read by Tuiasa Sopo. Again, he reads the body lean of the defensive players. He cuts it up. Great touchdown. Loses a shoe in the end zone. But Tuiasa Sopo, again, making terrific decisions. And the holding call against the Boilermakers put them back on their own 10-yard line. They had a turnover a while ago, and it cost them dearly with that high snap. Gave the Huskies the opportunity, and they took advantage of it. This is Montrell Lowe trying to find some room, and he comes out to about the 15-yard line. Keith, take a look at the Dell game solutions for Purdue. They, too, want to move the chains and melt the clock and keep it away from Tuiasa Sopo, but they've run 12 plays, and five of those have been for negative yardage. Keep Triplett, Triplett off Breeze. They're going to try to double-team him. We've already seen Triplett moving over to get over Allen because he thinks he can beat him. They have to double-team him and keep him off. They also ran that blitz with double-D Daniels, and he got a sack. Well, Purdue's offense has had He's run at what I guess you'd call four levels. Is that what the phraseology they That's put right. on it? Ball is pitched back to low. They're looking to run the ball a little bit, and they can run the ball. I told you that this offensive line is not just a bunch of pass blockers. They'll get out there and swap paint with you. And they did it just there as they put the ball up to the 30-yard line. And they set up the run with the pass. Breeze came out firing today, not very effectively. But now they've loosened it up. They've taken some of the defenders out of the box. And so now they're going to let Lowe do it. He's a hard guy to get a hold of because he's only 5'7 and a half. He ran for 200 yards against Indiana. He's got tremendous speed, low center of gravity, very tough to tackle. Well, they pulled their uh, big old Brandon Doran back there, 300 pound tackle and he got out in front of the lead block open the door for him here comes low again and he's got good yardage on that play picked up about eight on that carry Hakeem Akbar making the tackle today's aerial coverage being provided by AT&T at the Rose Bowl you know when you have a little guy like low Keith I call him a hide and seek runner because he hides behind those big guys on that offensive line and seeks his hole before the defenders can locate him He's so short, they can't find him. A.T. Simpson comes into the ball game. He's got one ball today, second down and long two. Low, it's his series. And he's hit right at the marker by Akbar. Akbar just nailed him, and he's got a penalty play. And it's going to be holding against Purdue again. So the Boilermakers will hurt themselves once they had second and short. Every time they get in a decent situation, they hurt themselves. Akbar, Hakeem was the roommate of Curtis Williams, the uh, free safety of the Huskies, who suffered uh, the in crippling injury uh, in the Stanford ball game. But he is watching. He is here at the Rose Bowl, and he is watching the game. And he's just thrilled to be here, and his teammates are even more thrilled to have him here. And I can think you can expect to see Mr. Akbar have a pretty good day. Spotted the foul penalty. Two yard gain, 10 yard penalty, second down and 10 coming up. People looking at the score and watching what's taking place here in the first quarter will say, hey, you know, Washington might blow them out. I don't no, think no. that's going to happen. No. I think from everything that's happened so far, I think it's going to be a very high scoring game, and Purdue's going to be in it, really in it, by the fourth quarter. Well, they almost got him. Now they're, that's the second time they've sacked him. Anthony Kelly. And Jamon Willis were the two men who did it. And they take him down back on the 24-yard line. Keith, we've seen a lot of different blitzes out of Washington already. They've had the zone blitz. Watch him come from this side now. And this is coming hard. They've got what it looks like man coverage outside. Here's the play fake. They come from the outside. They've got him located. And here's a guy that was sacked only seven times all year. Washington had 33 sacks 
on the season. We showed you that earlier. They've got two already in the first quarter. That's 473 snaps. <laughs> incredible. Pressure's still coming, and he gets it away this time down the middle. The pass is caught by John Stenderford. Greg Carruthers made the tackle, and there's the quality of Drew Brees right there. That would be the fourth level, I believe, of their offense. He looked one, he looked two, he looked three, and then hit four. Take a look at this. This is a freshman who's going to do this. You've got two receivers out here. He's reading them both, but he's looking right now for the post. He sees they're in a two deep, five under zone. Now they let him go. See that? They release him into the open area, and that's where Drew Brees finds him before he gets to the safety. Well thrown, well educated. First down, 46 yard line, 30 yard kickoff on the play. Ball is handed off to Lowe again, and Montrell Lowe will go for four yards on the carry. ABC Sports is the home of the Bowl Championship Series on Wednesday night. The undefeated Oklahoma Sooners and Florida State will get together for a little uh, head knocking. The game will be for the national championship in the FedEx Orange Bowl January 3rd live at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific on ABC. Shadows now have reached uh, the sideline uh, where Purdue is located and will soon be going out onto the field. It's going to start cooling off. The ball is handed off again to Montreal Lowe. And Lowe who's having a pretty good day will go down to about the 43 yard line. Purdue's offensive line now starting to pound. If they can get that big offensive line going, Purdue will jump back in this game in a hurry. I'm running out on the first quarter of play. The final four seconds ticking away. And at the end of one, it's 14 to nothing, Washington. ABC Sports coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T returns after this message and the word from our ABC station. Its legendary four-wheel drive capability. Drive you to despair, just make an angel. Jeep Grand Cherokee can go where no ordinary 4x4 can. This is the season to visit your local Jeep dealer. series with mobile messaging and college covers Nokia connecting people life is getting busier less time more to do but what if you could check our forecast anytime you want it what if you could get Como's time saver traffic report anytime you need it what if you could have the power of Como 4 news in the palm of your hand wherever you are Como 4 introduces local news anytime, anywhere you want it. Only Como 4 allows you to be first to connect with local news, weather, and traffic, and so much more. Como 4 News is first for local news. Now, anytime, anywhere. Sports with Eric Johnson, only on Como 4 News. You're watching ABC Sports coverage of the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. You got an indicated number two. One of the prettiest airplanes uh, ever built. The Mustang. Oh, giving my thumbs to form one of those. Partner, I have to tell you, there are so many planes in the area over this stadium. I don't know how they're controlling them all. Well, you got congestion on the ground to the point of gridlock. Now we got it in the sky with uh, <laughs> commercial banners. Unbelievable. Purdue has been held scoreless in only six of 44 quarters this season. The Washington Huskies just did it. 14 to nothing as we go to the second quarter of play. On third down, they run it and they get it. Contra 
Darrell Lowe, who slashes over the left side, picks up the first down for the Purdue Boilermakers, and they'll put the ball at the Washington 33-yard line. You know, coming into this game, every time Drew Brees would sc scramble in his last six outings, he got four yards or more. They're containing him pretty well here, so it's a good change to go to low. Now, look at this huddle by Washington. They are substituting on the field to the sidelines and not from the sidelines to the field. This time, they only had 11 guys, but they've been putting 14, 15 guys in there and then running them off the field. They'll change that rule up at you. On first down. Boilermakers, Breeze back, pumps once, looks left, goes right, balls in the air, and out of bounds, incomplete. And a penalty flag. The flag is thrown over there where the defender was working against the would-be receiver. But, Keith, I say again, I'm not sure that ball was catchable. But again, they rule it was. And they've called a penalty against the Huskies on the holding call. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Take a look at the Nokia player comparison, and obviously, Tui Asasopo has uh, a brilliant first quarter and just got two scores on the board. Bree's still trying to find his way a little bit. If you look at uh, what he's doing, completion and attempts, it looks pretty good, but he's been knocked down four times, and you see the rush yards, Bree's 84 of them. Well, that got Rick's attention. <laughs> Walks about four feet over his head. <laughs> There's the pitch back to low. He's having a big one. That's his tenth carry. Ball comes out. It was out of bounds before Washington recovered it. As a matter of fact, I think that Purdue's going to pick up an extra yard by the, the flip by of the, the ball. Akbar is the man who hit him. Ball is fumbled forward, out of bounds. Uh, Daniels covered it, but he was out of bounds. That's 10 carries now for low, and he's over 50 yards. Here's the ruling, and they're exactly right. You cannot fumble this ball forward and gain yardage, and you'll see as soon as it comes out of his hand, boom. All right, now right there where he's down is where that ball is going to be marked. Spot of the fumble. Where that ball came out of his hands, spot of the fumble is where that, that ball is marked now. 13-yard line, and uh, second down and five. Hands the ball to Low, and Low gets hit by Larry Triplett. And Triplett doesn't wrap him and hold him down, but he's going to lose a yard or so on the play because Larry Triplett is a big, strong man, 6'1", 295 pounds. He was completely parallel with the ground, but he was on top of Triplett and never hit the, hit the ground. Watch this. He's got tremendously quick feet. Right here, it looks like he's down. Triplett goes down. He's on top of those guys, now gets his feet back. <laughs> so he was never down. His feet go so fast, it's like he's tap dancing on a light bulb. <laughs> Third down and six. They go back to the shotgun. Reese throws underneath. Ball is caught by Standiford. And Standiford will get taken out of bounds at about the six yard line. But he'll pick up the first down, Keith, so it'll be first and goal now for Purdue. They're starting to move. They're more in rhythm, more in sync, getting more confidence. Standiford, just a true freshman. How about this? He's a terrific basketball player, but this time last year, he's playing in high school in small, small crowds. Here he is now in the Rose Bowl in front of all these people and millions at home. He hasn't even seen him yet. <laughs> he's having enough trouble swallowing and catching the football. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty good player, though. He sure is. Yeah. This is fun. He got that big old tackle now as a lead blocker. Number 77 did a good job, too. He took his man down. Brandon Gorin decked one of the Huskies and opened the way for the running back low. You know, he thought once he got free and he found the hole, he thought he was in. But I want you to watch the hit that Akbar puts on him. He's coming out of his safety spot. He has him eyed, inside out, tuck his tail, bam, and then put him on his back, knocked him sideways instead of forward. Here's the hit again by Akbar. That is one heck of a lick. He's an all Pac-10 safety. Purdue backed up five yards on the penalty. Here's the problem, though, Keith, with that hit. Akbar goes out now, and he's shaking up a little bit. That's an illegal formation, and uh, that came up in conversation between uh, Rick Neuheisel and the referees before uh, J John uh, Childers before the ball game. Owen Biddle comes in now, number 43, at the safety position, replacing Akbar. And Breeze turns. And uh, 
Latrell Lowe runs right into Biddle, who had just come into the ball game, the sophomore out of Bellevue, and Biddle makes the tackle. Montrell Lowe has to be careful with the football. We yep. saw him lose it once. That time he was carrying it very dangerously low. He's got to tuck that thing away, put his fingers around the end of the ball, put it up against his body, and hold on to it. Now watch when he spins. Watch this ball way down here right now, and almost did lose it. Ain't it? Well, he's got it again. And the ball is out there, almost taken away again, but he got away with it. And they've stopped him just short of the five-yard line. So it'll bring up third and goal, Keith. They've got to get out and use the, the width of the field here. They've got to get on the corner, give Drew Brees the option of passing or running, and stretch the defense a little bit. Well, they send some wideouts onto the field now. I'd go with the big guy, Tim Stratton, but uh, they at least have to get on the corner and use the width of the field. See where Stratton is. Well, he's lined up on the right side. He's flexed out about uh, three yards. Fifteenth play of this drive. Coming back to the line of scrimmage now. Stratton took us down right alongside of Gore. He's not going out. He's blocking. The ball is over to the end zone. Touchdown, Dennis Sutherland. Boy, give Jim Cheney, the offensive coordinator, and Joe Tiller a lot of credit. Things were getting tight in there. They kept running low. Washington closed down on them. So they come out, they spread the field sideline to sideline, create space. They created air so they could get a pass in, and Sutherland found the open crease. The extra point try now from Travis Dorsch, who I believe is the tallest place kicker in the country at 6'6". Six, six. And the kick is good. And the Boilermakers on the board. As we get started here in the second quarter of play, it's now 14 to 7 as they go 90 yards and 15 plays. Policemen, firemen, the mayor of my town. The dudes hanging off of the paper truck, Mr. Chang. Down at the local deli, sells me morning coffee, wishes me good luck. This is for the people in my neighborhood. They help me through the day and make me feel good. This spot's for you. And you and you and you. This spot's for you. AT&T's broadband technology is revolutionizing telecommuting. It's up to 50 times faster than your standard modem, so you can download a 100-page multimedia presentation while you upload your socks. Seventy-one episodes, no millionaire. So we're gonna keep raising the stakes until somebody wins it all. Mega Millionaire. It all starts Thursday, 9, 8 central on ABC. There's your scoring drive. The man that caught it, Vinny Sutherland, the five yards, and uh, Drew Brees threw a bullet. Now time for the Aflac trivia question. Today's question, who kicked the winning extra point for Purdue in the 1967 Rose Bowl? I know. I know. Huh? Mm -hmm. The last time they were here, huh? Only the other time. Right. I got a message from him. This morning, <laughs> I know it went did. simply like this: Hail Purdue, Hail Purdue, Hail Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, I don't know if uh, you could hear anything that was going on that sideline down there, but they are yelling at the offense. Purdue is to get out of the huddle and up to the line quickly. They aren't giving Drew Brees enough time to audibleize to check in and out of things. All right, Travis Dorch will kick off. He's from Bozeman, Montana. Well, Joe Tiller, the coach, played. Uh, over at uh, Montana State in Bozeman. So there must have been some relationship there to get Dortch from Bozeman over to West Lafayette. I think Greg Carruthers is from Montana. Isn't He's he? from Helena. Yeah. yeah. Montana, where the cattle outnumber the humans, three to one. High deep kick. Well, that's a good leg. Way back and gone. Eleven twenty six to go in the first half of play. The Washington Huskers leading Purdue by a score of 14 to seven. Didn't think I knew all about that cattle stuff. There are pockets of pollution though. <laughs> oh, stop it. 
All right, we've got a timeout at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And now the shadows start to reach onto the playing surface. AT&T's broadband technology can expand your company's growth potential with virtual private networks. Secure, scalable, high-speed telecommunication systems that can take any shape you like. Hey, to each his own. Boy, I sure miss playing. Yeah, me too. Hey, guys, you can still get to the Super Bowl. How? Oh. Just collect game cards, especially marked bags of Frito-Lay snacks. You match a play in the card with a play in the Super Bowl, and you can win one of millions of prizes, like Super Bowl tickets for life. The AFC just kicked a field goal. All right, I want a hat. Hey, I want Super Bowl tickets for life. The hats are good. Don't forget to watch my pay-per-view improv special on Super Bowl weekend. Ford Outfitters and ABC Sports bring you the Escape to the BCS winning key feature for the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. It's power. Stay by the phone. If you're called and you correctly identify the key feature just shown, you'll win a new 2001 Ford Escape. There's still time to enter at bcsfootball.com or call 1-866-2-ESCAPE for your chance to score during another BCS game. Escape to the BCS, only on ABC Sports. It's Britney. The halftime show is nothing like the show you'll see next Monday when LL Cool J and I host the American Music Awards on ABC. So we'll see you there about 8, 7 central. Cool. Thank you, guys. What's a Boilermaker? What's a Boilermaker? Boilermaker is whatever you want him to be. As long as he goes to school at Purdue. Jay Leno says you got to love a school where the mascot is a party drink. <laughs> They've had a good time out here. Huey Asasoko, a little drop off here. Pass to Willie Hurst. And Willie Hurst just gets smothered. And uh, the Boilers pick up the ball and run away with it. But it's going to be called down. It's Gilbert Gardner, who is a freshman from Angleton, Texas, who made the tackle. He came to Purdue as a receiver. Never played linebacker before this year. Actually was recruited as a wide receiver. But look what he does here. He comes up fast, closes inside out, doesn't give him anywhere to go, and makes a good, solid tackle. And he's happy about it. Well, and you can see and feel the momentum of the game changing a little bit as Purdue now has settled down, and now they're starting to play football. And it's second down for the Huskies, and uh, goes back around the 14-yard line. Ball is thrown off the hands. That's the kind of a ball that is picked off. It was thrown for Todd Elstrom, and Elstrom could not get up and pull it down. Thrown hard and high, and uh, turned into a tip. And you hold your breath on those. Sure do. My daddy used to say, if it hits your hands, you better catch it. And I know that prior to the game, Rick Neuheisel was upset with all of his receivers because they weren't catching the ball. Woodyard had given him space to make the catch. It was high and hard. They got to go up and get those. It's third down and uh, officially a 15, though it's a little more than that. In that end zone, those are mostly Purdue folks, and they're trying to help their team. And Tuiasa Soko back gets the pass away down the middle. It is to the tight end, Jeremy Stevens, and it's a first down up at the 36-yard line. Oh, he is a big target and a prime weapon. 21-yard pickup. Anytime they flex you out like that and they spread the field, the inside receiver is the most dangerous. We told you about Stevens and his height. Now, here he is in here, and he's just going to come down the middle of that that Purdue defense. He's got the most field to work with. Here he comes down the middle, actually circled the wrong guy, but he comes, he was the inside guy of the three receivers flex from his tight end spot and found that middle seam. He left the ball game uh, right after that catch and he was dragging a leg a little bit, but he was by himself. And here's a penalty flag. The ball is handed off to Willie Hurst. Flag is thrown by the linesman across the way and Willie's out just over the 40 to the 41. How can I circle the wrong guy? Six foot seven. Can't miss him. <laughs> I'm the only guy in the stadium that missed him. Offsides, Purdue. <laughs> I got so excited because I knew he was going to be the guy. You've been out here in Pasadena too long. <laughs> I'll send you back there where it's cold and the weather's life is harsh. 
<laughs> I got to get you back there with the me. defense, <laughs> five yards, previous spot, repeat first down. That is the eighth penalty, Tim, on Purdue, the 56 yards. That's hurting yourself. It really is. And again, we said earlier, emotion gets in the way of concentration. They've got to be smarter. You don't mind aggressive, over-aggressive penalties occasionally. But when you're just making stupid mistakes, coaches will just go crazy. First and five for the Huskies. Ball handed to Hurst. Well, they jump all over Willie. Let's spend a moment with Todd Harris on the field. Well, Keith, Jeremy Stevens is coming back in. It looked like he had a helmet to the thigh, pointed to the train. They just did a quick massage on it. One other note, Aiken Adele on the Purdue side is yelling at his defensive players to watch the eyes of Marcus Tuiasosopo. He thinks if you watch Marcus' eyes, he will give away which way he's going to run on a run. But we've seen that all year, and uh, the Pac-10, not many people have been successful in doing that. Keith? What's the temperature down there now? Todd, it's cooled off? Yeah, it's balmy 82. I think at uh, game time it was closer to 90, but the folks in Purdue now enjoying the weather more typical to what they have. I know in West Lafayette it's 20 degrees right now. Yeah, it was the high of 20, 21 today. And 50 in Seattle today. Here's Tuyasa Sopo pitching it wide. It won't work, folks. They were looking for it and they found it. Landon Johnson was in the right place at the right time. He's Aiken, another Texan. Aiken and Dell might be on to something. If, Marcus is tipping things off. Adele is a smart player, 19 sacks in two years, so he knows how to read a quarterback's eyes. So they have squandered uh, that first and five circumstance as they go back to third down and ten. Purdue is undersized up front. Substitutions are key. They've got to rotate them in that heat that you just talked about with Todd. But at the same time, they've got to use that quickness that they have, that advantage and quickness to their advantage. Hurst catches, but it's well short of the first down marker. He's taken down at about the 42-yard line. Landon Johnson again in on the play. Another freshman. There were five freshmen on that Purdue defensive lineup. For this defense to be successful, everybody has to get into the, the, the mix here. They've got to pursue the football. You've got to get 11 hats around the football. And right now you're seeing Purdue really starting to get after things a little bit more. This is the first punt for the Huskies today. Ryan Fleming, a senior out of Seattle, good punter coming out. He should hit the ball around the 31-yard line with Vinnie Sullivan waiting for Purdue. Sutherland standing back at his 13. He's a good punter. Sutherland calls fair catch at the 19-yard line. And there, Purdue will have it. First down, a 14-7 ball game. And right now, it appears that Mo might be wearing white. insurance is complete. To everyone, everywhere, celebrating the future. Happy New Year from Accenture. Presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by AT&T. Proud sponsor of the 2001 Rose Bowl game. AT&T. Boundless. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. Accenture. Happy New Year to everyone everywhere celebrating the future from Accenture. 
and Daytech Online, the online broker that's built to trade. Seven twenty-nine to play in the first half of the 87th Rose Bowl game presented by AT&T here on ABC Sports. The Purdue Boilermakers coming out now. Last time they had the football, they put it in the end zone. Breeze to Sutherland. They will start this procession from their own 19-yard line. This is Montrell Lowe. And he spins away for four yards. Fiesta Bowl, Costitos Fiesta Bowl tonight over in Tempe. Next on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series, it's Oregon State and Notre Dame. The quarterbacks, Matt Lavecchio, freshman for Notre Dame. For Oregon State, Jonathan Smith. Second down and six. Huskies almost got in that neutral zone. They may have. Uh, Montrell Lowe breaks the play and gets it out across the 30 for a first down. And it may well be it's an offside against Washington. They'll take the play. Pretty interesting watching Drew Brees that time. He moves Stratton, his tight end, up on the line, making the strength of formation the right side. Everybody shifted that way and ran the back side. Defense, that penalty is declined. First down. What's he doing? Changing his hard count? Or well, what? first thing he did was change the formation. He brought his tight end up to the line of scrimmage, right? He's got him set now. He gives him the hard count. They were working at this all week in practice because they thought Washington was so aggressive they could get him two or three times during the game. They just got him once. Oh, man. You don't tell me they're not doing some hitting. Lowe's helmet comes flying off as Greg Carruthers Laid a lick on him. They're getting serious now. They are. You know, last year everybody talked about the Pac-10 being the poorest tackling conference and not being aggressive. Well, look at this. Tuck your tail, sky your eyes, drive right through his chin, and it knocked his helmet off. Jerry, Carruthers is just a young guy, too, a freshman. Jerry Claiborne teach you that? Oh, I'm, that is a <laughs> picture perfect form tackle by Greg Carruthers, the freshman. Second down and uh, short six. Huskies are offside. They were in the neutral zone. They got a flag. The guy on this side was penetrated. The flag came from across the way. Cedric Brown gets his first carry of the ball game. He's a 236-pound sophomore from Flower, Texas. You know, Keith, you're talking about Jerry Claiborne teaching that tackling. Carruthers is a coach's kid. He's, he's fundamentally sound. Offside, defense, five yards, previous spot, first down. There's a look at Carruthers, the young freshman, 6'2", 190 pounder. This time last year, he was playing high school ball. Second down, they need a yard. They run for it with the big guy rumbling. And Brown will go down to the 41 yard line for a Purdue first down. So the Boilermakers are moving the change. There's your AFLAC trivia question we asked you a while ago who kicked the winning extra point for Purdue in the 1967 Rose Bowl? Well, USC, the opposition, went for two. And George Katabalis uh, intercepted the ball to stop the two point conversion try. Bob Greasy, the quarterback, kicked the extra point. Now, I want to tell you something as we come back to the field of play and the Huskies handle the running try. You saw Grease walk up there and smack that thing, and head came right up with it. Well, he took that same move right to the first tee. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Greasy was playing back when that was film. That stuff would bounce around. I was surprised they had face masks. <laughs> Happy New Year, Grace. He's a good man. Ball is on the 47-yard line, where it is second down. Still 10, about 10 and a half for Purdue, and they go to the shotgun. with double wide. They've actually got three wide receivers up at the top of the screen. And put a fourth in motion. And Breeze, getting pressure, dumps it off underneath. And he short-hopped it, didn't he? 
That was well defended. You know, you're talking about Bob Greasy, and of course, when Bob was at Purdue, he set a lot of the records, but look how times have changed. Look how the passing game has come into football. I mean, just look at the yards. And, I mean, look at all the school records and, and listen to the music. That's your kind of stuff, Keith. Oh, yeah. That's taking you back in time. That was Bob Greasy's music. Strangers in the night. That was the number one song that year, wasn't it? Winchester Cathedral was a big hit that year, and so was Michelle. <laughs> Third down and nine. Breeze getting some pressure, passes away, short hop Dutton, and uh, avoided the sack. Rock Alexander, who has been in the ball game playing in the nickel package, and uh, Rock making his presence known. Just when it looked like Purdue was starting to gain some momentum here, the defense asserted itself. A couple of good hits by Carruthers and Akbar and Triplett got in the act that time and they stopped him. Scott Kurz now, the punter is into the ball game. Keith this Ray is, Butler is waiting for it. This is the field position. You have to, if you're on defense, you have to watch for a fake. Tim Scratton, the tight end, does the snapping. Ah, he's trying to hit it up the elevator shaft, and he's got it up there, and a fair catch is called. And, and now they throw the flag. They have to throw the flag. I mean, it has to. It's automatic, isn't it? Well, it, there was contact, sure. Yes, yeah, contact. Anytime there's contact like that on a fair catch, was, you got to uh, throw a flag. Stratton, the man that snapped the ball. Non-contact, kick catching interference by the kicking team. Five oh, yards from the spot. First down. There was contact made. Hey, Jack. <laughs> but you know what? Even if that that guy's coming forward, that receiver's coming forward to make that catch. You've got to give him the leeway. You've got to give him all the space to make that catch. Well, Tim tried to avoid him, and his momentum just carried him right into it. So that's the end of that, too. better way to track your shipments through the supply chain? This is a job for FedEx. You're blanking. Faster. More reliable. More profitable. With Nortel Networks, the internet can be whatever you need it to be. No matter who you are or where you are. So tell us, what do you want the internet to be? Right now, over me. In my house, I have a stair climber. In my, In house, my house, I have a stationary bike. In my house, I have a treadmill. In my house, a rowing machine. And they're all collecting dust. Get out there and explore from your Ford Outfitter. Outfitting you with the most far-reaching sport utilities on Earth. Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. You're watching ABC Sports coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. <laughs> Drew Brees walking around, not happy with the circumstance. He's a boy, he's a gamer. He does not like the trail. They trailed uh, in that great month of October twice by 28 to 10 and came back to win both the games, one of them against Michigan. Watch Tuiasa Sopo now work the rest of this clock in this half. From the 21 yard line, first down, will hand the ball off to Willie Hurst. And Willie pops across the 25 to the 26, and we'll pop down to Todd. Well, Keith, Marcus Tuiasa Sopo has a lot of the, uh, as we should say, big uglies protecting him. One of them, Chad Ward, could be a world's strongest man candidate. He set a school record for a 733-pound squat, power clean 430, and a bench press of 500, just over my best. He has a vertical leap of 31 inches, and uh, he is impressive. And these guys average 314 pounds in the front line, so the Royal Prince is in good shape. I'll tell you what, that big old Elliot Silver's on the other side at uh, 300 and, uh, what, 20 pounds. may be more agile, actually, than uh, Chad is, but Chad straight ahead is a powerhouse. That was Pat Reddick making that catch. Again, a high percentage pass, using the clock, moving the chains, got down, brings up third down and short, gives them uh, several things they can do here on third and short. You can open up the playbook. 
There's the comparison of the Washington offensive line against the Purdue defensive line. But so far, I don't really feel it's made all that much difference. No, it hasn't. Ball of makers have held their own very well. Third and short, Tui carries. And he looks like he will have it. Because the uh, ACC officials do not look like they're doing that one step, one step, left foot, right foot stuff. No, like and that's a good call, too. Anytime you have short yardage, whether it's on the goal line or the middle of the field, I've never agreed with taking a quarterback away from the mark that you have to get to hand off. Just let him go forward and get it. Just find the little gap right there. Ball is precisely on the 32 yard hash mark now, where it's first down for the Huskies. You've got Conniff and Hurst and uh, two back set now for Washington with three wideouts. And Tui Asasopo comes off the snap, changes the play, rolls it out. Nobody to throw it to. And it will go out of bounds. You know, that's a mental mistake, Keith. He should have thrown it away. He was outside the five yards. Nobody was open. He should have thrown it away and not lose yardage. Tomorrow night, the Bowl Championship Series goes down the road to New Orleans as the Miami Hurricanes and the Florida Gators will get after each other in the Nokia Sugar Bowl, live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Get complete analysis of all the BCS games, including announcer bowl predictions at ESPN.com, keyword BCS. Very rare to see Marcus make a mistake like that. It's second down and 16. That's a good play by number 53, Sean Phillips, who batted the pass away. That is not a good series for Marcus Tuiasosopo. No, it definitely is not. Phillips is one of those quick guys. He's a young guy, redshirt freshman. They say he, he could be one of the best they've ever had. Now watch this. He's six foot three. He's got a wingspan of about eight feet. He gets up when he, when he leaps. That's hard to throw over. Well, what he's in, uh, he might be doing here if he's not careful with uh, two minutes to play, he might be giving Purdue not only good field position, but also momentum. Well, give Purdue a lot of credit for what they're doing, but this is where Marcus usually shines. He, he melts that clock and moves the chains. And he's got to do it on third and 16. They got a piece of him, and uh, they take him down. It is Stuart Schweiger. He ran over Schweiger and the la uh, when he scored his touchdown, but this time Schweiger won the skirmish and took him down. And so the Boilermakers will call a timeout now to possess the ball, forcing Washington into a punt. And the Boilermakers ought to come off this with pretty good field position. The score is 14 to 7 with 152 to go in the first half. All right, now the heat's on Ryan Fleming to get the ball away and get a lot of air under it and keep uh, Donald Winston as far away from uh, getting the ball in stride to give Purdue field position. So let's see whether or not Fleming can do all that. The Washington punter is standing just inside his 10 yard line. The snap is good, and the kick is away, and it's not as high as he probably wanted, but a fair catch is called. And, uh, and no flag. Purdue folks are hooting for a flag up around the 41 yard line as Rock Alexander bumped into it. Let's spend a moment now with John and Terry. Well, Keith, coming up on the National Cardinal Halftime Report, four games already in the books today. And Terry, in a couple of days, your dad will play for the national championship. But the week has not started out very well for the Bowdens. Your brother Tommy was a loser today. Yeah, he was. You know, he played Michael Vick in Virginia Tech. You know, Michael Vick said he may come out after this game. Tommy's wishing he'd have come out last year. You, by the way, for the second consecutive year, undefeated. I'm Keith, there. back to you. All right, John, did you call the corner? <laughs> on first down from the 42, the ball is thrown to Vinnie Sutherland on the sidelines, and just that quickly, you're across the 50 and down to the Washington 47 for a first down. Purdue got a, or Washington rather, got a big break on the punt. There should have been interference call because uh, Rock Alexander came down and actually touched the receiver, hit the receiver, tried to tackle the receiver after he called fair catch. Now Breeze comes out with two timeouts, great field position. Purdue's in terrific shape here. Ball at the 48-yard line. First down snap. Staying in the shotgun where he has more time and more vision and throws and the receiver falls down. Vinny Sutherland lost his footing and 
uh, goes down incomplete forward pass short hop it it's very hard when you run across that rose out there in the middle of the field it's like running across a sheet of ice <laughs> What you, was know, it? you tell your story. Well, it's a here's the deal. Story. Here's the deal. <laughs> you know that they, they had helicopters out here today trying to dry the paint on this field because the weather's been so good. The grass is growing through the paint and had to repaint it. Bad part is I sat here for 20 minutes today watching the paint dry. <laughs> We're gonna get you by you some books or something. <laughs> Ball is thrown short underneath, completed to A.T. Simpson, and Simpson is wrestled down at about the 43-yard line. At least some gray on it. <laughs> They had to keep rake painting the field because they had to cut it because the grass was growing. That's funny. <laughs> that helicopter driver was good though. He just he was going up and down this football field. We haven't had to rain around here in three months. Here it comes. Bang! That slant. Seth Morales got position in front of Von Tour and ate him up. And it's first down Purdue at the Washington 27-yard line. You cannot defend that play if you give that man that position. Well, and they're protecting Breeze better. And Breeze is throwing on time. He's delivering on schedule. And you're right. Anytime you've got a good receiver out there that uses his body for positioning, they're going to complete it. Breeze pass goes down the pipe. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Intended for John Standiford and Rock Alexander had a chance to come away with that one. Told you that this is a wide open, fun offense. Tiller calls it basketball on grass, and they've got footballs flying all over the place. He loves this offense. It's fun for the kids. Boy, this one's almost picked off, though. Should have been a touchdown, number one. Stanifer lets it go right through his hands, but look at Alexander still fighting the ball and really had a chance to intercept it. He had to locate it and hit him up on the shoulder pad, and he couldn't get his arms up. Second down and 10 from the 27. 53 seconds to play in the first half. 14 to 7 ball game. Drew Brees thrown for the end zone. And it's incomplete. Too high, too deep for Vinny Sutherland. He was defended by Chris Massey. Vinny Sutherland is a 5'10, 194 pound senior. He's listed as 5'10, but I'll guarantee you he's, yeah, he's not no. any more than 5'8 and a half, 5'9. <laughs> I, I mean that. He's more like a Wayne Corbett type wide yep. receiver. Incidentally, you see uh, two or three of the players, including uh, Sutherland, wearing the pad for the plays on their wrist. Uh, I'm told that Drew Brees wears that armband with 100 plays. Yeah, all numbered. Good number. He knows what the number is. They call it number five. He knows it. Third down and ten. Little play action. And throws to the sidelines to Sutherland for the first down. How good is that kind of stuff, huh? They had him spread out. The Huskers were trying to contain him. Would have preferred probably he run. Instead, Sutherland just hid down there on the sidelines and made the kick. Well, he can run, but they know he can throw, and he's most dangerous when he throws. He puts that ball above his shoulder pad. You see the linebackers and the DBs break down. Now, all of a sudden, he finds his wide receiver and just puts it out there. He freezes them by bringing that ball up high, finds a receiver, and then locates it and lets that ball fly. Massey dropped off of Sutherland and left him alone, and then he stopped on the sidelines. It's first down at the Washington 13. To the sidelines again he goes, and it is uh, caught and taken out of bounds, stopping the clock at 37 seconds, and it was Chris James okay, making that reception. Believe it or not, folks, as much passing as they do at Purdue, it's a high percentage offense. It's dink and dunk stuff. Drew Brees has it down to a rhythm. He throws on time, but they're all short passes for the most part, and very rarely does he go past his first or second read. He comes up, he looks at the defense, and by reading the defense, he knows which receiver will come free. 37 seconds to go in the first half, and the Boilermakers have it at the nine-yard line of Washington, second down. Brees pumps, throws, no. Intended for Sutherland. Yeah, and that wasn't a good pass, Keith, and, and Drew knows it. He's hitting his helmet right now because he knows he had a touchdown and he just overthrew it. You know, earlier Stanford dropped the touchdown, so they're having a tough time getting in the end zone. But watch, he knows this this man was open and he knows he overthrew him. That's just frustration from a great competitor. That's the one his granddaddy, who was a great coach, would be telling him about after the game. <laughs> Third down. From the nine, third and six. He's pointing to the left side. Had a defensive man free. They had to cover him. And here he comes. And the pass to the end zone is incomplete. 
Good coverage for the Huskies that time. Pass intended for A.T. Simpson. Omari Lowe was the man who made the play. And it was Hakeem Akbar that was chasing Drew Brees. Brees saw him coming, too. He, he knew they overloaded to that side and outnumbered him. So he saw the uncovered man and went the opposite direction, saying Akbar is going to have to chase me. But that's good coverage and a good overload by Washington. And this will get Travis Dortch into the ball game for John Shelburne's snap on the, the field goal try. Holder is Ben Smith. And it is a 26-yard try. Chip shot for Travis. It's good. So we've got 26 seconds remaining in this first half, and Purdue adds three more to make it a 14 to 10 ball game. Coming to halftime, here's the scoring summer in the ball game. Washington out to a 14 to nothing lead, but then Purdue has now come back with a touchdown and a 26 yard field goal by Dorch to make it 14 to 10 and 26 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, but that field goal, Washington dodged a bullet. Yes, Standard for dropped a touchdown pass and Breeze overthrew another one. Derek Johnson is the single man for Washington. Huskers are looking for a return here. Sopo on the sidelines and waiting for one more shot at it. This is a good high deep kick by Dorch. He'd be better off to leave it in the end zone. He's coming out. He's got a wedge. And he goes down at the 17-yard line. So stayed in there. Now time for the AT&T flashback, a memory from the Rose Bowl, as they're one of the best was right here in the Rose Bowl. Sure could throw a pretty pass, couldn't he? Mm -hmm. Holding call against the Washington Huskies. So oh, everything would have been resolved if he'd have just stayed in the end zone and taken the ball out of the 20 yard line. Good point and the Huskies better be careful here because right Marcus was terrible in the last series and gave Purdue that opportunity to score. They better be careful here with 22 seconds left. Just take a knee. They've got the knee play the time play the clock play. Purdue uh, may very well let him uh, now they call the timeout. They called it. I thought they might just let it go and go to the clubhouse. In fact, the Purdue players are, are going to the clubhouse. <laughs> Some of them haven't been paying attention. They don't know the timeout. They're in the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, they gone. have gone off the field. Hey, guys, come back. We got the ball. Those guys are going to be embarrassed <laughs> when they get in the tunnel. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Joe's like, who called timeout? I thought the best line of the week was from Joe Tiller when he said, uh, or when they first arrived, he said, ah, let them spend all the per diem money the first two days, then we'll know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably right. He's been pretty much right about everything so far this year. <laughs> they're going to put more time on the clock. I wonder if those guys are going to come back. <laughs> I think they're too embarrassed to walk back into the stadium. It's like that commercial. You need to need to get out of town. He's uh, Joe Tiller is one of the guys that came out of Wyoming. Boy, there were a lot of good coaches came through Laramie. Go back to Bob Devaney for one. Fred Akers. Dennis Erickson. One timeout remaining for the white team. They got one more time out, but I don't. I'll tell you, I, Keith, I don't mind them taking this. I think that's a pretty good move. Who knows? You could get a bad snap. Well, sure. Anything could happen down here. I mean, you, it doesn't help you to take those timeouts into the clubhouse. Just the five players that left. It kind of bothers <laughs> That first dibs on the Gatorade. Marcus stayed on his feet as long as he could. Well, they called another timeout, and now we have 10 seconds remaining. And Marcus backed up, though. He's now inside the five. has got a little raggedy all of a sudden here hasn't it well it's a little cat and mouse they're playing strategy they're hoping for a missed snap or something in the uh, some kind of mistake by Washington but that's their last time out so this will be the last play of the half here they come back. here come these guys at the top <laughs> what's going on <laughs> hey guys we got the picnic basket <laughs> open come on <laughs> Then he's helping one of them. They're going to try to sneak back. They want to get behind these guys. <laughs> Travis Dort, the place kicker. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Now, what would have happened had they recovered a fumble? They called. That'll do it. 
they don't, can't stop the clock. There's no timeout remaining. So we're clicking away the final three or four seconds, and it's gone. At halftime, the Washington Huskies of the Pac-10 lead the Purdue Boilermakers of the Big Ten 14 to 10. And now we go to John and Terry. What you do here if they've been able to get the wrinkles out of their offense, which sort of went flat there in the closing moments of the first half. Purdue kicking off. Dorch hits it, and it's very high and not too long. Drifting back to the seven-yard line goes Rock Alexander. Yeah, he didn't get much out of that at all because the ball was up so high, they decked him on the 15-yard line. Take a look at Washington in that first half, and Purdue special teams. Of course, here with Stratton's adrenaline flow, snapped it high, had a bad mistake, and Washington just turned it on. Tuiasa Sopo faked the column, broke a tendency, and went in and scored. Pretty good first quarter for Washington and a good second quarter for Purdue. The Huskies come out with Braxton Clement at tailback. They've got uh, Justin Robbins wide to the bottom of your picture. And on the first play, it's an option. On the left side, pitched out there to Clement. He, though, it is Rich Alexis. Alexis, the freshman, into the ball game, who's got a very bad shoulder. And he was belted out of bounds, and he landed, I think, on that shoulder that he had hurt. So that one play may be all he gets today because he turned on the steam coming up the sideline. Tuiasa Sopo on the option makes great decisions. Sees the defensive end went with the pitch man, so he turns it up. But he knows his pitch man is still there. He locates him right now. Now he finds him, pitches it out. It is a behind the lateral. It's not a forward lateral. And there he goes. Alexis, as you mentioned, was banged up. He's had some problems, was a fresh All-American, but a great pickup and a great read decision by Tui. Ball is thrown very quickly to Reddick, and the pass is completed. It's gained uh, about five yards for Washington, but uh, back to Alexis. He was shaken up, and he is still shaken up, and we may not see him again today. He went for 50 yards on his first carry. There he is, and he went right down on that separated shoulder problem that he had. Now, if he doesn't come back, all they have left is Braxton Clement, and Willie Hurst. They're Willie Hurst to, is banged up. Yeah, Willie's got a sore shoulder too. Broken. He had a broken shoulder. Broken bone. Second down, call it six. Pitches outside, goes to Clemen. Getting to the corner, getting around the corner is the thing. And he he may not have uh, enough quickness to outrun Purdue's pursuers. Joe Odom, number 51 linebacker over there to get him. Rick Neuheisel's feeling at halftime was, hey, look, we've got the lead and we've got the ball to start the second half. So let's get back and do what Washington does best. Let's put Tui on the corner. Let's work that a couple of times. We'll set up the pass to Stevens, and then we'll get this thing rolling. So you see his third down situation right here. He's three for three. There he is again on third down and five. throws and it's a bad pass. Yes. Oh. Almost sure was. Almost intercepted by Gilbert Gardner. He had a lot of time, but that was a coverage uh, downfield was very good by Purdue. And uh, he's still elusive. Even in a play like that, Tuiasa Sopo gets back. He'll milk as much time as he possibly can. He feels the pressure in the pocket. He tries to roll the opposite way and avoids one. Then tries to get it to Stevens, what they normally do on third down, but it was it was not available. So it brings up fourth down and five, and a 47-yard field goal try by John Anderson. He's got enough leg. He made it. 47 yards, and I mean he had a lot of air under it when it went over the goalpost. So the Huskies get three in their first possession to start the second half of play. And their lead goes back to seven, 17 to 10. AT&T's wireless data technology can provide fast, easy access to over 100,000 websites designed specifically for handheld devices. Go ahead, cut the cord.
to everyone, everywhere, celebrating the future. Happy New Year from Accenture. You kids don't know how easy you have it. Why, when I was your age, I was easy. If a thing is worth doing, it's worth doing well. We start at 8 a.m. sharp. I trust you don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Season premiere is Tuesday, January 9th on ABC. Today's aerial coverage for the Rose Bowl provided by AT&T. You can see now the San Gabriel starting to change colors as we told you they would as the day went on. And in a little while we'll have the sun going down toward the Pacific. The brownies have arrived. Is still being worked on. Yeah, he took a lick on that, that slam. He really hurt. Yeah. Here's the kickoff now. Anderson. It's a short high one. It's fielded at the 15 yard line by Vinny Sutherland. Found a hole up the middle of the field. Gets to the outside. There's a penalty flag in his wake. And they finally bring him down inside the 40 down at the 35 yard line. And uh, where's the flag? Had a lot of penalties in the first half. Nine by Purdue, four by Washington. Could be against the Huskies, you know that? If it is, it's their fifth of the game. Encroachment on the kickoff by the kicking team. That penalty is refused. First down. So the big play with Vinny Sutherland, and here's Purdue crank it away. Bobby Hawk, the special teams coach for the Huskies, not happy with that. Great return. Watch this now. His eyes immediately go to the right side where he sees a hole and sprints that way. Very little false steps. Never. He's trying to get yardage everywhere he goes. When he outruns the kicker, he says, I better cut back to the inside. And that's the end of the run, but it was great decision on his part. Purdue ball, Washington 36-yard line, first down. Breeze turns and gives to Montrell Lowe. And Lowe will go down for perhaps a little loss on the play, but no more than the line of scrimmage. Chief, that man right there was the story of the first half. Montrell Lowe just 5 foot 8. 16 carries, 71 yards. Some of them spectacular. Watch this. His feet never touch the ground. He was the reason that Purdue was able to win the battle of time of possession by five minutes in the first half. Low with 71 exciting yards. Call it second down and still about 10. Too wide at the top of the screen. Too wide at the bottom. Not very many folks left in the middle. Brees throws quickly and it's almost picked off. It almost went to the hands of Rock Alexander who had nothing between him and the goal line except cool late afternoons. Air. Well, I'll tell you what happened there, too. Washington went to a dime, a dime defense. They had five defensive backs in the game at one time. Rock Alexander's looking at Breeze the whole time and actually reads his eyes and goes that way. Tremendous step in by Rock Alexander, reading it all the way, and he almost had the pick. Third down and ten. Working out of the shotgun. Drew Brees throws to the sidelines, completes the pass. They've done that four times today. Vinny Sutherland making the catch. They just go down the sideline and hide, and Huskies let him go. We haven't seen Lowe since uh, he had that helmet ripped off in that one tackle. Here you go right here as you look at Sutherland. He just runs a good out pattern, runs him off. See Massey backed off, couldn't make the turn or the cut as quickly. So Lowe's back in there. He started to have second half. Ball is down on the 24-yard line. And it's a first down on the catch by Sutherland. Reeves keeps it. Wants to come back this way and does. And uh, let's check in a moment with Todd Harris. Well, Keith, the word on Montreal low in that first half, as we saw, his face took a few licks. The helmet came off a couple times. They finally put a few stitches in his lip during the halftime. They are going to bring him back in. He will see more action the other day, so it's not going to stop him whatsoever. We're still checking on Rich Alexis, though. The doctors are still working on him. Alrighty. That last pass was intended for low, but he yep. was well covered, and so Breeze just threw it away. Go, go. Second down. 
Just starting the second half. 17 to 10, Washington leading off of a 47 yard field goal by Anderson. Brees on second down and 10, throws high into the air to the end zone. Touchdown, Benny Sutherland. Beautiful pass. Remember, Sutherland is only, I don't think, more than 5'9", for sure. And that ball was touched right into his hands perfectly. Rock Alexander and Greg Carruthers was there, and uh, nothing they could do. His second touchdown reception of the day, Drew Brees picked him out by reading the defense immediately. He was going to him all the way, never looked off. He ran a flag pattern, had the inside receiver, took that flag right to the post, and the ball was waiting for him. That was well thrown. Good route, too. Trump Miss Dorsch for the point. Out of Ben Smith's hold, and the kick is good. So we're tied at 17 with 11 minutes and 58 seconds to play in the third quarter. Go play outside. It's a beautiful day. Idle hands on the devil's playground. I'm going to let you go this time, but take it easy out there. Internet helps you reach millions of customers around the globe. But who's keeping you in touch with the Internet? Fujitsu. The possibilities are infinite. Hello, Mr. Buffo. Thank you for the nice uh, gift pack of beef jerky. Uh, beef jerky. Thank, Thank you. you. A jeep. Wish I could take credit, but I didn't send you all any jerky. You didn't? Well, no. The last gift I sent you was that box of filet mignons about two months ago. Y'all got that, didn't you? Shipping internationally. You're all there? This is a job for FedEx. Hello? The Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different. FedEx, FedEx, official sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Inspired technology with a human touch. Nokia, connecting people. And Dell. Seventeen, seventeen time as Purdue kicks off now to Washington. This time the Huskies have two people deep, and this is a high deep kick. Well back in the all, he's coming out, and he gets across the twenty. Ooh, that's pretty good stuff by Derek Johnson, and he comes across the thirty and out to the thirty-three yard line. Keith, let's go back to the touchdown. Benny Sutherland, the leading receiver for Purdue, is right here. Now he'll run that little flag pattern. He had 65 catches on the year coming in. He's got five today. That's his 13th touch touchdown of his career, and that's a new Purdue record, actually, of this season. Look at that, where that pass was put. You know, he's a 5'9 guy. He's not tall. We saw him get overthrown earlier, but we mentioned he's like Wayne Corbett. He is like that. He's a possession receiver, and he really knows how to separate from defenders. 33 yard line, first down for the Huskies now. I think Marcus Tuiasa Sopo knows that Purdue's about to take this game away from him. They don't get busy. Ball is thrown quickly and hard to Jeremy Stevens, and Stevens will pick up no more than three yards on the play. Wednesday, January 10, brand new Drew Gary show. Looks like it's the last, last call when the city tries to close down Drew's favorite watering hole. Brand new Drew Gary show at January 10, 9, 8 Central on ABC. I saw Purdue's defense was a little bit shaky in that first quarter, and, and why not? I mean, they've got five freshmen playing on the defense for Purdue, but they really settled down, and they've played quite nicely ever since. Rich Alexis is back in the ballgame. They strapped him up, and he wanted to come back, I guess, and the doctor said, well, you go ahead. And here comes Trujillo, Sopo's option to Alexis. He turns inside, and uh, they 
take him down just about the line of scrimmage by Landon Johnson. Here's Todd. Well, Keith, as you and Tim pointed out, Rich Alexis has a history. What it is is a sublexated right shoulder. We saw it happen the game we did up in uh, Washington when they played UCLA. What they do basically is pop the shoulder back in, tape it to try to support it and give it some kind of stabilization. And Rich Alexis is not enough pain, and he said he wants to keep playing, so he is in. Well, they need a speed. Third down and six now. Well, they say five. Thing it's third down. Pass is down the middle. Caught by Jeremy Stevens for a first down for Washington. Right on the midfield strike. We called for Stevens early in the ball game. We said Tui Asasopo likes to go to him often. Did not go to him that much in the first half. But here he is now. Stevens has five receptions for 50 yards. He's six foot seven, but watch how he sits down in the open area. He just feels his way, can feel the defenders. He went to the seam, sat down, waited in the soft area for Tui Asasopo to find him, and there's your first down. At midfield, with 10 minutes exactly to play, in the third quarter. Alexis, kind of dropped his head and dove in there and picked up two yards. Two great quarterbacks came into this ball game. Everybody knew they were the headliners. How are they doing head to head? Look at it. Both of them having pretty good games. 11 of 15 for Tui, 14 of 23 for Breeze. At one point, Breeze was 8 for 9. But you see the yardage differential right there in favor of Drew. But the minus 25 rushing yards, and a lot of that had to do with the two sacks. And of course, he was dropped twice behind the line of scrimmage on runs. Braxton Clement is in at tailback now. And they've got double wide bottom of the picture. Tui changing the play. Play clock down to five. He's got to get the snap. Three-step drop. Throws quickly. Pass completed to Wilbur Hooks. And Hooks is right on the 40, and that ought to be a first down for Washington. It is. As we told you, the uh, officials are from the ACC. Atlantic Coast Conference. John Trovers is the number. Jack Trovers is the number. Alexis comes back now. I know those, back. I think I was the most penalized guy in the ACC. I know those officials well. <laughs> this is Conniff the fullback. Pat Conniff runs it inside the 25 yard line. It'll be Washington first down near the Purdue 23. That right there is 1-2. That's desire. Kind of 6'1", 245 pounds. Watch your fullback ramble. And watch the strength that he has in his legs. Here's the hit. He turns, and look, keep those driving legs, and he moves forward for another four yards. Here's a guy that was playing with a dislocated shoulder. Just a strong running back. First down. Tuiasa Soko, play action, passes away to the end zone. Close. Todd Elstrom had it on his hands. Ball was maybe a foot too far in front of him. Very close. Elstrom is playing with a very sore knee. He is, but again, Tuiasa Sopo goes to play action and he locks on the receiver that he wants to go to. Actually had him open just a little bit too far out in front. But I can see what the Purdue guys are saying by saying, watch Tui's eyes because he's leading you to the receiver that he's throwing to. Second down and ten. Joe Tiller having a look. They're holding Stevens. Guy had him by the shut coattail and spun him around. Aiken Iadell uh, gets the sack on Marcus Tuiasosopo. Keith, you were right on top of that one because in that situation when they're second and long and third and long, we told you they like to go to Stevens. He's looking for him here, but watch this coverage. Turner's on him. Turner's got hands on him. Rides him hard. Stays in his hip pocket. Now comes up and jumps on his side. And there was no way that Tuiasa Sopo was going to throw into coverage down this deep in Purdue territory. Ball is back on the 30-yard line, where it's third down and 17. Quarterback draw. Back to the 25, close to the original line of scrimmage. They might be within uh, big old Andrew, John Anderson's range again. He nailed a 47-yarder. Is he coming? Yes, here he is. And that one he hit from 47 could have been good from 57. Yep. 
Bo John, who is only a sophomore from Boynton Beach, Florida, he was uh, partly responsible for Rich Alexis coming out, and there's some other people coming from Florida. John turned out to be a pretty good salesman. 42 yarder. Snap was a little high, but he got all of it. Wow. Big leg. Good. Huskies go back to the lead, 20 to 17, on a 42 yard field goal by John Anderson. This is the big one. I wonder if Nikki can handle it. Mary, um, she was great in her time. This will fuel your competitive spirit. It's the best time to buy sale only at Sears. This is what it all comes down to. Choose this Kenmore washer and dryer combo and get free delivery and get an amazing 0% financing with no interest and no payments until 2002 on all home appliances over $399. Don't count me out. Now it's my time. Sears, proud sponsor of the BCS and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. It's so different, it's the best minivan ever. With the only power hatch ever in a minivan. The only automatic three-zone climate control ever in a minivan. The only movable center console with power outlet and more. But even with all that's different, there's one thing will never change. The all-new Dodge Grand Caravan. Different. Even if you tend to roam around, you can still keep people close. The AT&T Regional Advantage Plan. Freedom to wander within a multi-state home calling area with no roaming charges and no long distance to anywhere in the U.S. So whether you're passing through the neighborhood or a neighboring state, with AT&T Regional Advantage Plan, you can stay in touch with everyone you care about and still feel free to roam. AT&T Wireless, your world close at hand. This is the Bowl Championship Series on ABC Sports as coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T continues. Six minutes and 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. Washington having gone back to the lead 20 to 17 with John Anderson preparing to kick it away. And waiting for it is Vinnie Sutherland and Chris Plumpton. And there's the gunslinger waiting to come for Purdue. Goal line. Here comes Clapton. Starting to cut outside, lost his footing, goes down 26 yard line. Take a look at the ATT action highlight, and you'll see that Vinny Sullivan has been the big play guy. Here he ran a post pattern, they hit him, then he runs it to the other side, he runs the flag, he goes out with it, and they hit him there. Two touchdowns tonight give him. 13 for the season or this afternoon. He has 13 for the season. That's a new Purdue record. Plus, Keith, he had that 51 yard kickoff return, which set up the touchdown. Good player. No turnovers in this ballgame. Yep. Well played. Only really big mistake is that uh, snap over the head of the punt. Ball down the middle. It's Sutherland and almost picked off. That's really good coverage by Omari Lowe. Low cutting in behind Sutherland, reading the ball just about right, and almost made the catch. Pretty interesting. Sutherland thought he was open again, and Low had that closing speed. Right here, it looks like Sutherland's open, but watch Low close, and that's one of the guys they wanted to attack. Talking to the coaches and talking to Tim Hunley, the uh, defensive court or the uh, Jim Cheney, the offensive coordinator, says, "Hey, we're going to go at Low. We're going to take some shots at him." There's one of the shots. Low responded and broke it up nicely. Second down and ten. Shotgun, breeze quickly, sideline, good, out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Pick up five yards. Donald Winston. The attendance today. 94,392. Tis a fine gathering on a fine day. And one of the greatest scenes in all of football. Great venue. Third down and five. Threes for the year, 58% on third down, the best in the nation. Quickly, Sutherland, short of the first down. He, they didn't take him down on the first hit. He kept his feet, but they've stopped him two yards short of the first down. Akbar, 
involved in it. Great stop by Washington. Purdue will have to punt it away on fourth and two. And Scott Kurtz is in the ball game. 45 and 29, his two punts so far today. Tim Stratton, uh, the tight end, does the snapping. Do they have enough people on the line of scrimmage? They do. Low kick, tail dragger. Going to take a good roll for Purdue. Finally picked up by Butler back there, but he's immediately knocked down at the 13 yard line. He kicked it away from Butler, and it was a low line drive tail dragger, and when he hit the ground, it took off like a rocket. It turns out to be a big kick of 53 yards. Give in to the big, tasty, original chicken sandwich at Burger King. Right now, it's just 99 cents. Crispy, delicious, all-white meats. With fries and drink, it's just $2.99. The original chicken sandwich, just 99 cents. With fries and drink, just $2.99. At these prices, we're practically giving it to you. Only at Burger King. I don't care who started it. I want it to stop. Now. Look, it's time you take things into your own hands. The unification of corporate subsectors must be authorized. <laughs> I love football, but I really love music. Brittany and LL Cool J host the American Music Awards next Monday, 8, 7 central on ABC. We'll be doing the play-by-play. -play. Washington gets the ball back, but in poor field position at their own 14-yard line as a result of uh, the ball hitting the ground and rolling. Well, let's see what happens here. Who's in there at that deep back position? It's Alexis. Rich Alexis is in there, and he's coming right up the middle. No, it's Connick, the fullback, coming right up the middle, the first man out of the two-back set. And Pat's going to pick up about three, four yards. Tomorrow night, Bowl Championship Series continues on ABC. The Miami Hurricanes, Florida Gators, Nokia Sugar Bowl. That'll be live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Get complete analysis of all the BCS games, including announcer bowl predictions. Oh, that's a big deal. Announcer bowl predictions at ESPN.com, keyword BCS. <laughs> Did you vote for them? Kuyasa Sopo throwing into the crowd, completes it to Joe Collier. Tight end, who makes his first catch of the day. Big target, Joe 6'7", 260, from uh, Spokane. You know, what's amazing to me is Tuiasa Sopo is so mobile, and you look at everything he's done, and he's only a two-year starter. Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year holds 11 Washington records, eight career fourth-quarter comebacks. He's only been a two-year starter. Talked to Gil Brandt, the great scout in the NFL. He says, hey, listen, mobile quarterbacks are big right now in the NFL. This guy's a warrior. He can play. Option. Oh, he got around the corner. Man Peck's favorite play, and... Got it to midfield and a first down for the Washington Huskies. I think the only drawback would hit would be on him, Keith, is he's a thick guy, and thick guys don't keep their speed as long as the, the more slender guys over the long haul. But right now, he's got terrific speed. He's got terrific strength. And look at the mobility he has, the fake, and then turn it up and look, get that extra yardage. Money they're paying today, five years, you can go be a partner. <laughs> By a fishing boat. Do whatever you want. You know. <laughs> I'm with you. First down from midfield for the Huskies. Option going the other way. Going to run a reverse. Here comes Butler. Oh, my goodness. There's a push in the back. It's Terry Tharps. Terry Tharps coming around. And uh, the Huskies are going to lose it. He's had a big push in the back. Holding that both, and they had holding, and I saw the push in the back. But they had Elliot Silvers, a big old tackle, had come out here to be the lead block, and uh, there was another block downfield that just destroyed the defender. 
And Tharps is blazing Holding speed. By the offense, 10 yards from the spot. Repeat first down. Question now is where was the holding and how much of a penalty is it? It'll be a 12 yard gain, a 10 yard penalty. So you got a first and eight, really. But you know what? That Rick Neuheisel's got to be going crazy right now because he worked on that play all week in practice. He waited for just the right time where he thought he had pursue per, or Purdue rather pursuing and over pursuing, and he came back with reverse. It worked perfectly, and they get the penalty. So it's first and eight with Willie Hurst in the tailback now for Washington. And Tuiasa so close passes away and is in a trap. He no. skipped it. He outs past it in there. And a moment now with Todd Harris. Well, Keith, it's amazing who you'll find on the Washington Husky sideline now with the Kansas City Chiefs warm moon now. And I know you got to be rooting for your dogs today. No question about it. You know, this, this game brings back a lot of memories for me because it's where my career started. And I've been behind the program ever since I left. And these guys are doing a great job. What are your impressions? Uh, evaluate number 11 for me. Oh, he's just, he's a great player. You know, he's a playmaker. He doesn't have the greatest arm. He doesn't have the greatest size, but he makes plays and he wins. And that's what a quarterback's supposed to do. Great to see you, Warren. Thanks a lot. Happy New Year. What a good player he was. What a good guy he is. The ball is at the 44 yard line now as they get it across. And it'll be third down and about five. Designed play. Looked like it was a broken play, but it was designed for Marcus Tuyasasopo to take that thing off tackle behind two big blockers. It'll bring up third down and long. And uh, again, we tell you that's where they normally look for Stevens. At the lunch yesterday, I saw big old Bob Slorette. I'll tell you what, that one eyed quarterback, back to back Rose Bowl MVPs, that's almost unheard of. But Bobby was third down and five. Had a hurry. Can't do it. You know what? He lost his footing. He got skating around out there on all that paint Tim was talking about. Uh, you, 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 you let it dry too much. Because it is really slick when you run onto that rose and he lost his footing. Well, I'll tell you something else, too. They are not letting Jeremy Stevens loose. They had two guys on him. He's up here at the top of your screen, 14, trying to release. Marcus never had any time. They pinched him hard, so he decided to run it, which was a wise thing to do. Still couldn't get free. Glendon Johnson was the one that messed up that play for Washington. Purdue outside guy on defense. Ryan Fleming punting. Pops it up in the air. High Sutherland gets away from it. Takes a bounce and the bounces and it's going to roll dead at the Purdue four yard line. Well done, Mr. Fleming. Ruby's coming aboard now. Not much real estate at his back. You look at this, he set almost every record you can imagine. These are pretty good numbers when you look at this. You go all the way down to the bottom to the total offense down there. What From the four, be careful, country. Hands it off. Montreal Low skating around will get about a yard on the carry before Anthony Kelly puts him away. Isn't Anthony Kelly the one that's going off to uh, South Africa for advanced studies? Yes, he is. He's excited about that. He was a young man that didn't care much about all the classwork, but along the way and getting to where he is, some teacher lit his candle and he is absorbed with it. Running it, low, ankle tackle. At the nine yard line, they'll give his progress the 10. And again, it's Anthony Kelly. Here's, uh, here's Todd with more on this interesting young man. Well, Keith, he's just an absolute delight of a kid. He'll take a leave following the game. He heads to South Africa on the 5th. He'll be back in March. Now, he got the Mary Gates Scholarship. If the name sounds familiar, it's Bill Gates' mother. She was a regent at uh, the University of Washington. He's the first University of Washington athlete to get it. And get this, he was a partial qualifier out of high school. Rick Neuheisel says South Africa will never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> Give a kid a chance, though. He can succeed. That's right. Third down and four. Out of the shotgun, Brees quickly to the sidelines, and uh, they're short of the first down. I think it's going to be close. close. 
It's close. That was John Standiford who hasn't seen the ball all that much today. They're going to measure. Rock Alexander may have been a tad late getting there. I think he got a pretty good mark. You watch this, and the ball's delivered on time, but he doesn't have time to turn because they close on him quickly. He's looking at that first, first down marker, and he's trying to get there, but a terrific hit by Alexander, who, by the way, is playing a great game. Came in as the dimebacker. Now he was playing so well, they're playing him more and more in the base defense. He's another one of those precocious freshmen. Got a good spot, and I still don't think he made it. It is short. Well, short. It'll take some gizzard to, to go for it down there. No, it's not a good call, Keith. <laughs> not, in, not in a close ball game like this with so much time left, and these being two fourth quarter teams. Look, Joe's been uh, played at Montana State, and he's seen all the snowfalls along the whole Rocky Mountain range and evolved this offense. But he isn't going to gamble here. It would take Gizzard to go for it, but if he doesn't make it, they'll rip that Gizzard out. I don't think he's going to. Go. No, no way. If it was a minute five to play in the game instead of a minute five to play in the third quarter, that might be different. Sure. Scott Kurz. Standing right back around his goal line. No pressure. Good kick to midfield. Ball's caught. No fair catch. And a penalty flag. They were inside the halo again. That's the second time today they've been called inside that halo, and they're not giving him that two yards they have to give him. Might have a face mask, too. Cody Pickett warming up on the sidelines because Marcus Tuiasosopo ran down the tunnel a moment ago. Non-contact, kick catching interference by the kicking team, five yards from the spot, first down. That's third time now that uh, they've done that today. There he goes uh, with accompaniment, a trainer going into the clubhouse. Kind of dragging that right arm too, it's just he hanging is. by his side. Yep, and Cody Pickett, who has played very little this season. And here's Todd with more. Well, Keith, initially they're saying it's the shoulder of Marcus Tuyas Sopo that he injured, rolled up on it. They went in for precaution. They want to take a closer look at it. And I don't think they want to do it under the glare of the fans here. I know a lot of folks at Washington, when they saw him ran in, everyone had a big awe. So the story on Cody Pickett now, as he comes onto the field to replace Marcus, he's from Caldwell, Idaho, 6'4", a freshman. He uh, has uh, one for two. He's a big kid. He's got pretty good vision. They say he's poised. Well, Keith Gilbertson keeps telling us that uh, he's a very good athlete and he can run the option play very well. But we, we've not seen him do it in combat. Well, and I suspect that's what they're going to do. They're going to start running the football here. And, and depending on how badly Marcus Tuiasasopo is hurt, knowing Marcus, he's going to come back in the ball game. But if that's his right shoulder, he may not be able to throw effectively. But he still can run. There's a look at Keith Gilbertson. So here's Cody Pickett in the hot box now for the first time in the Rose Bowl. Dropped. The ball is dropped by Rich Alexis. So you got two freshmen handling the ball there, and they don't do a very good job of it. Well, you mentioned that he's coming into a tight fit situation. He hasn't done it very often. As a matter of fact, Tuiasa Sopo has taken almost every snap in his career, all but 35 in two years. So the timing's a little bit off, although it looked like the handoff was there and probably should have been taken properly by Alexis. Pickett barely shows up in the season review, to tell you the truth. Here's Cody's first pass. It's a beauty right on his hands and out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Todd Elstrom made the catch. Young fella from Puyallup. Here's the latest from Todd. Well, here's the word from the trainer. I just talked and they took him in. It's a right AC sprain of, unfortunately, his throwing arm. They said it's not too bad, but they want to take a picture just to make sure they think he'll be back. Well, Pickett's biggest role so far was against Washington State. He came in and engineered a seven-play, 27-yard drive for a touchdown. Willie Hurst is the tailback right now. So he's thrown once. He's going to throw twice. Passes away, and it's caught. 
but it's going to be short of a first down on third down and six. He had to come back for the ball Justin Robbins and he's going to be a yard short of the first down. Now Washington will take a good look at this because this is close enough to go for it but you've got a field goal kicker that's got a strong leg and has been very accurate today. So Rick Neuheisel will look at this he'll talk to his staff they'll get some consulting and he'll find out whether he should go for it. We've done three of them ABC sports coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T comes after this message and the word from our ABC station. All right, the football is resting. If I can get that graphic off there to show you, it's not a yard. It's no more than a half yard from being a first down. And look who's back in. It's Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. They're going to go for it, Keith. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's Conniff that gets the carry because of Tuiasa Sopo's shoulder. But he went in to see Dr. Feelgood. He looks pretty good. He was throwing okay on the sidelines. He may just quarterback sneak it. He might. So it's fourth down, and the first time in a ball game we've had a play come up with this structure. It goes to Rich Alexis, the tailback, and he went through there like an 18 wheeler going downhill and got the first down. And Pat Conniff was out in front of him leading the way. So Tuya Sosopo becomes a very dramatic persona here for a moment as he comes back in after having been examined, pictured, and strapped up. I think this is the injury right here. He comes down hard on that right shoulder. Watch when he lands. He breaks away from the tackle and then slams down on the right shoulder. And he immediately reaches up there. So they've got their first down. And he hands the ball away to Alexis again. He just goes straight ahead. And grabbing a hold of him as he goes by is number 42, Brent Butts. So the Washington offensive front now remember a bunch of the five three hundred plus pounders up there and they can pound on you. We are in the fourth quarter. Yeah you look at the rushing of Washington interesting they led the Pac-10 212 rushing yards a game despite the fact the Huskies didn't have a single runner in the top ten individually most of the year. Doesn't matter. They by committing on you boy. By committee. Yep. Second down and eight. They're inside and beaten again. And they're going to take it down to about the 25 yard line. You know what they're doing here. They're not only pounding that ball now, they're not only getting physical and taking over this thing, but they're melting the clock and shortening the game. We're down under 14 minutes now. Leading 20 to 17. Remember, the Big Ten has won seven of the last eight of these Rose Bowl games, and they've got a pretty good string going again. Both of these clubs are fourth quarter clubs. Third down. Three. Option. And Tuiasa Sopo turns inside. And leg strength may have got him the first down. Gilbert Gardner had a hold of him. He's 216 pounds. Tuiasa Sopo weighs at least 220. Purdue wants a measure. Nope. They're not going to get one. It's a first down. And Tui again. He cut back up rather than trying to take it outside and play with the tackler. Just forced him to follow him into that gap. And he really lunged forward and got the first. Now the strategy really does become keep away. Keep Drew Brees on the sidelines as much as you possibly can. Ball is on the 23, just inside the 23, so it goes in the books as the 22. Tuiasa Sopo throws to the sidelines, complete to Todd Elstrom. And Elstrom is rolled out of bounds by Woodyard, and he is short of the first down marker. Saturday, ABC Sports will go to Australia to bring you the first big golf event of the new year with Ernie Els, Hal Sutton, Justin Lincoln, and Pacific on ABC. Our producer Mark Loomis is leaving right after the ball game for the lovely journey to Australia tonight. This is Rich Alexis. And he's passed the 10 down to the 8. Aiken Adele brings him down. Well, oh, Mark, he's young and limber. He can win. A little mix up on the play. The timing was off. And Tuyasa Sopo and Alexis bumped into each other. Right now, that offensive line is pounding. Watch yeah. this. Here's the collision. Throws him off, but look at the cutback. Stevens kind of standing around, not getting a block to help him back from the cutoff. 
but right now Silver Spray's Ben Warden Paul are dominating that line of scrimmage. It is first down goal to go from the Purdue eight yard line with uh, Braxton Clemens at tailback. Blake clocks it one. Just got it off. Air ball to the corner. Touchdown. Todd Elstrom out jumped the defender for the sixth. They threw they picked on the five seven quarterback and it paid off. Elstrom 6 3 Clopton 5 7 guess who wins that jump ball. Well, you're right the coaches say that Clopton's a pit bull but he's a short one. <laughs> and you take a 6 3 guy and Tui Asasopo really knows how to put the ball high he does it with Stevens and here he does it with Elstrom it says go up and get it it's a jump ball and if a 6 3 guy can't out jump a 5 7 guy shame on him. And the extra point try now by John Anderson. And it's good. So it's a 27 to 17 ball game now as Marcus Tuiasa Sopo takes his team in for the touchdown. Todd Elstrom goes up and wins the jump ball for the touchdown playing with a sore knee but he did what he had to do. It's an amazing thing what a surge of adrenaline can do. Well, he was the only experienced receiver that Washington had coming into this season. And with his leadership, guys like Robbins and Reddick and even Hooks, those guys started to catch on, and this became a very dangerous ball club. John Anderson will kick it off. Sutherland and Clapton are waiting. Lights are on at the Rose Bowl. Short high kick. It is fielded well up the field, and it is Pete Lucky. And he'll get up to about the 28 yard line. Now the FedEx game summary. Well you see where the score is right now and the rushing belongs to Washington. Let me say this the Rose Bowl winner has won the rushing battle in 24 of the last 27 games and with that ability to run the football coming into this half Washington 14 minutes Purdue only four in time of possession as you look at the rest of those numbers. And now Mr. Breeze your state. Quickly outside it goes to Donald Winston. Very simple little stand up play, but it works for pretty good yardage. Picked up about eight. Today's aerial coverage provided by ATT. And there's the sun sliding gently into the Pacific. These have been five of the most beautiful days I've ever seen in Southern California. Don't tell anybody. Clear as a bell. You can have all those Easterners moving out here. <laughs> Midwestern. may be one of them. How? I have a question after this play. Under center, turns, penalty flag goes down, ball is handed off. Play stops just about the line of scrimmage. How much can are you allowed to curl your offensive line? Well, we've got Dave Perry up here. That's something that they, they cannot get off that offensive line. They have to be aligned with the other linemen. It can't be a yard off that line. They can't be two feet off that line. They've got to have a hand on that line of scrimmage, do they not? All right, so the helmet must be on the imaginary line. See, they can't cheat at all. And that's something Rick Neuheisel was talking to the officials about before the ball game to watch for. There have been a couple of times it looked like a semicircle. <laughs> well, that's illegal. They won't always call it, but Rick Neuheisel was trying to alert them to it. They picked up the first down. There's your offensive line, and you see their helmet's supposed to be on that line of scrimmage. Breeze down there, and it is incomplete. He had it on the hands of his receiver, Standiford, but John was in some traffic and couldn't reel it in. Ben Madavi was the man covering on the play for the Huskies, and now. Drew Breeze is going to be looking at second down and 10. This ball was thrown so well right a little bit behind right it, but I mean right where only his guy, John Stanford, could get it. That ball has to be caught. The even. thing that amazes me about him in traffic like that, with the sky falling on him, he's able to put touch on it. The ball was not thrown hard. Very catchable. Surprising to me is the tight end Stratton. Only two catches in the yeah, game. He's been very 
And three wide outs at the top go back the other way. The pass is completed, and it's a big game for Purdue as Cedric Brown came out of the backfield. They had three wide receivers up the top of the picture to the left, came back to the right to the fullback, and got a big play out of it. Brown's one of those guys. He plays mostly on the third down. They come in in packages. Certain guys have certain roles on this team, and Browns is usually on long yardage, and they just kind of slid him out of the backfield. I don't think anybody even no, knew Huskies were nobody over there that he was back there because the linebacker never did pick him up. Nope. It's a first down for the Boilermakers at the Washington 37-yard line. Here's a running play with uh, low fumbling the football, and Washington says they've got it. I think they do. That's the first it's turnover Washington of the ball, game. ball. The first turnover of the ball game. Low took a wicked hit from Greg Carruthers, and he's still down. Carruthers covers the ball. And I'm not sure that Greg had a piece of the hit or not. But it was a slashing blow, and uh, we've got a timeout for the injury. So the ball is turned over by Purdue as they're trying to get it in the end zone and shorten that 10-point lead. It is Carruthers that hit him. It has been completely redesigned. So it is more powerful. Safer. Quieter. And more spacious. With ultra-low emissions and improved fuel economy. Introducing the all-new Civic from Honda. Amazing but true. Why can't they park in the garage like everyone else? Hello? 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 <gasps> Happy birthday to me. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Hello. Security. Make it a Bud Light. Looking for a better way to track your shipments through the supply chain? This is a job for FedEx. The blanket. The Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by AT&T. Proud sponsor of the 2001 Rose Bowl game. AT&T, boundless. Honda, a winning lineup of cars, sport utility vehicles, and minivans. Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. And Charles Schwab, when we created a smarter kind of investment firm, we also created a smarter kind of investor. So Washington gets the ball back at their own 34-yard line. And Tuiasa Sosoko options down to Willie Hurst. And Hurst got around the corner. Texas both had the speed to turn that corner on the option, and Willie just did it there. It's first down, move the chain. The time remaining, 10 minutes and 46 seconds in the ball game. Washington is leading 27 to 17. Keith, at halftime, we told you that Purdue dominated time of possession, and you can see that. Look at the second half. Washington, 14.08 to just 5.06 for Purdue. It's a game of keep away. They're keeping Drew Brees on the sideline. On the 47 for this snap. And it's Hurst. Oh, Willis Motors running. He's inside the 40 yard line, down to the 38. Again, I say to you, you've got five 300 plus pounders along the offensive front, and they've been beating on them all day long, and it's getting now into the middle of the fourth quarter. And how many times, Keith, have you heard out here about the Pac-10 being a wine and cheese conference, being soft, especially last year? I don't think so anymore, especially Washington. This is a very strong physical football team.
First down at the Purdue 38 yard line. Pat Conniff gets a carry. And the big fullback from Woodenville is uh, inside the 35. It's a gain of about four yards. 94,392 came. The uh, Purdue folks all went over to Universal City last night and almost wholly occupied it. <laughs> Good, they've had a good time. I haven't run into anybody from from uh, Indiana that hasn't had a good time out here this week. Both Happy schools, they could, yeah. both schools, well represented, well behaved people, just just terrific. Play clock down to one. He's not going to get it off. Nope. So you got second down and six coming up after this timeout with nine minutes eleven seconds to play in the game. looking healthy how are you two doing we're great just doing the parenthood thing you know mm -hmm. buying a minivan oh oh he's kicking mm -hmm. <gasps> mm. what minivan the odyssey mm -hmm. nice very nice with a fold down third row seat and a five star safety rating it's beyond a minivan the odyssey from honda You didn't put all those in the credit card. Yeah, why? Those interest charges are really gonna get us. Don't worry. I used our new Capital One card. It's interest free. To the neighbors! If you had a new Capital One card, all your purchases would be interest free until July 2001. We gotta tell Bob and Carol about Capital One. What's in your wallet? The Nokia Sugar Bowl, as much a part of college football as ABC Sports. Miami faces Florida, tomorrow night at 8, 5 Pacific. Charles Schwab will make contributions to the scholarship funds of each of the universities represented in the bowl championship series. And no, you can't have one of them. The Rose Bowl game, presented by AT&T. And here we go, 27-17 Washington, 9-11 to play, second down and six for the Washington Huskies on the Purdue 34-yard line. Run it with Hurst. Willie turns, he's good at that. And he swings around against Arizona up in Seattle when Washington played him. He made one of those turns and kept his feet one of the great plays of the season. Watch this. Look at the balance. Look at the turn. Look at the low center of gravity he has. That's the move he just tried to put on there. But that one is incredible. How he kept his balance, I don't know. That's a great athletic move. And watch. He does it here again. A little spin. Not the same kind of pirouette, but he tried to spin his way off. Woodyard wouldn't, wouldn't let him go. It's uh, on the 27 of Purdue now. First down, Washington. Curiosa Sokol's missed way back behind the line of scrimmage. Gets his pass away. It is complete to Collier. Collier now this season, including the bowl game, has caught three passes. He had one catch coming in. He has two today. Purdue, Purdue really needs a break now. Washington has the Boilermakers playing on their heels. They have fake action, play action. He rolls the opposite way. He's outside. He could have run or passed here. Boy, he is just uh, such a, a dangerous player. I think you're beginning to see now why I call him the warrior. Boy, he's he's a tough guy. Well, you heard Warren Moon say he's not the best passer around. He's not the best runner, but definitely the most dangerous. And he's got Purdue right now guessing. Belly series almost there as Pat Connick goes inside the 10-yard line and down to about the 8 before he's finally brought down. He's a little bit short of his first down as Washington leads by 10 with 8 minutes to play in the game. Rose Bowl in Pasadena. 
as unusual as it is instead of the Big Ten team pounding it is the Pac-10 team now that is just pounding the ball down the throats of the Boilermakers. Purdue now walking around with the hands on their hips a little bit showing some tiredness. And good reason. Even with as much substituting as they've been able to do. They keep pounding it. This is Hurst. Touchdown. Willie Hurst right up the pipe. Keith, that's like using a workhorse and a thoroughbred. Conniff ran the ball the last time. He's the big pounder at 245 pounds. Then they come back with Willie Hurst, who's only 5'10 and slight of build, but is explosive as a runner through a hole. Watch Conniff lead him up, and watch Hurst just explode with speed through the hole. Wide open hole. There's the block by Kurt, by uh, Conniff. Not a big one, but just enough to throw him out of rhythm and keep him off Hurst. Anderson for the point. Contact along the line of scrimmage. The kick is up, and the kick is good. I think that'll be flagged off, and uh, unless one of the Huskies was moving before the snap. Offsides, defense, point that counts. penalty is refused. The point after is good. And so Washington has scored 17 unanswered points after Purdue tied it at 17. The Huskies now lead 34 to 17. Hi, I'm Chris Carter. I'd like to talk to you about a problem that can happen in your city, your community, to someone you love. The inability to tell the difference between a bid price and an ask price, a market order, and a limit order. But thanks to programs like Web Shops, Schwab is making a difference. At Schwab branches across America, they'll teach you all about using the world's leading online broker. Last year, Schwab held over 10,000 web shops. To sign up for one or to attend our other workshops, call 1-800-9-SCHWAB. There's fun stuff all around you. You just have to know where to look. The new go.com. Your guide to a better time. Boy, I sure miss playing. Yeah, me too. Hey guys, you can still get to the Super Bowl. How? Just collect game cards, especially marked bags of Frito-Lay snacks. You match a play in the card with a play in the Super Bowl, and you can win one of millions of prizes, like Super Bowl tickets for life. The AFC just kicked a field goal. All right, I want a hat. Hey, I want Super Bowl tickets for life. The hats are good. Don't forget to watch my pay-per-view improv special on Super Bowl weekend. Washington's four touchdowns have been scored by four different yeah. players, plus two field goals from John Anderson. Clemen had a touchdown. And uh, Tuyasa Sopo had a touchdown. And Willie Hurst has had one and Todd Elsman won. Anderson kicks off. Oh, skittering thing. It's caught on by the up man again. That's the second time that Lockheed uh, has made the reception up around the 30 yard line. Keith, let's go back to the Dell game solutions and you can see the total play advantage. Let me break this down very simply for you. When Purdue has more plays than the opponent, they normally win. And when they don't, they've lost. Today, they've had six less plays, but here in the second half, Washington has run 37 plays to just 15 for Purdue. Let me say to you folks, this thing, it ain't over. Like Yogi warns you, it ain't over till it's over. There's seven minutes and 17 seconds. And if anybody can get it done in a hurry, this is the guy right here. And Reese throws complete to A.T. Simpson, and he's right on the first down marker. As we go along in the game, I would like to say that the gentlemen from the Atlantic Coast Conference have done a fine job officiating this ball game. The referee, Jack Childress, and his crew done an outstanding job. Reese looking to go big. Now gets a little bit of heat. Finally chased out of the pocket. He's got all day, and he has to throw. And uh, they say no. Never had control of it. Sutherland went out of bounds. 
with the ball wiggling around in his hand. Saw some of Drew Brees' escapability there, though. He has that internal feel. He knows when people are coming. He's got an instinct to know. And he got outside the pocket and rolled. But here's what you're talking about, not having possession. See him bobbling the ball as he goes out of bounds. He, had all, he went to his left and still really put something on it, put some heat on the ball. He, he's not a gimme, I'll tell you. He's 6'1", 220. You're not, you're not going to get him for nothing. Second down and 10. Brees throws to the sidelines, and the pass is caught. And again, it's just short of the first down marker. Told you about the ability of both of these teams to be strong in the fourth quarter. Well, Purdue had to come from behind. And here's, I know that this really impressed you. I mean, these oh, are some of their comebacks. That's just remarkable. These are some of the comebacks they had. And look how they won late. Yeah, but look who they're playing. I know it. <laughs> I mean, how about the October sakes. they had? Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm, that really is impressive. But they can come from behind, and it's because, like you said, Drew Brees just has a gun. Third down and one. Throwing for the first down. It's not good. Bounced off the shoulders of Cedric Brown. I'm not sure he would have made it had he made the catch, but, you know, Drew Brees is he's going to lead a comeback. He's got to get some help. They've had a lot of drop balls in this ballgame. Fourth and one, and they're going. There's no question about this. Defending here is Omari Lowe and Jamon Willis. That ball still has to be caught. So here's a fourth and one call. This is the ball the 41. game. 6.47 to play. This baby is wrapped in the best tensor. It's a run. It's good for the first down. And he isn't through yet. He scores. Touchdown, Purdue. Cedric Brown refused to give up on the sideline, just kept pumping, and the Huskies could never get him out of bounds. And you know who threw a key block? Drew Brees. It wasn't a great block, and it wasn't a block that would knock a guy off his feet, but he was out there scrambling just enough to keep him off his running back. Now watch, here's the handoff. Keep an eye on 15, come around and try to help Brown out. Now watch Drew Brees, 15, diving over right here, the running back, trying to readjust and getting just enough to get him off his feet and let Brown come around the corner. I'm not sure he didn't step on no, the line. I don't there. think he did. No, nope. I think he was in all the way. The kick is in the middle of the uprights and good. Like I said, yeah, Yogi's right. Yogi's always been right. broadband technology you can download a full-length aria to a home pc in seconds that was wagner's de meister singer the dance mix trouble it's miller from risk management he's in distress miller Monty, what's our capacity? Well, headroom 38.5 inches, leg room 42.1 inches, and of course, shoulder room. Mister, I need hip room. Front seat or rear seat? Rear seat. A full 54.1 inches, sir. That's more than enough. Got room for one more? Climb aboard, Miller. It's easy to get carried away. The Accord from Honda. NYPD Blue takes possession of Tuesdays, January 9th on ABC. Nice call, Rep. Six minutes and 37 seconds to play in the football game. And guess what the coaching staff had to say to the Huskies when they came back to the field? You can party after the game is over, boys, because it ain't over. Maybe started celebrating too much, but you mentioned 6.37 left. That drive, five plays, only 48 seconds. High pop-up kind of a kickoff that carries down to the 10-yard line. It's fielded by Rock Alexander. And Alexander does not get back to the 20. They take him down at about the 18-yard line. Time permitting, the new Ford Escape postgame show, including the Rose Bowl and the MVP trophy presentation. Hey, Keith, how impressive is that last drive by Purdue when you think that they did 
get five plays in 48 seconds. Yep. That's amazing. Yes, it is. But Brown to go 42 yards strapped on the sidelines like that. Not very good play for the Huskies either. 236 pounder. He runs pretty good. There wasn't that many people bothering him. <laughs> Clemen opens a tailback for this possession, and now the Purdue folks in the other end of the Rose Bowl have taken heart. They're making all the noise they can make. Got to travel a long way. A little option here goes to Clemen. He's getting to the corner, and he can't turn the corner. Purdue strung that one out as far as they could run it. Number nine, Schweigert was over there, along with Sean Phillips. Schweigert, the safety, made the tackle with Phillips, and Turner, the other safety, was in uh, Tui Asasopo's face and almost caused a bad handoff. Watch how quickly he gets there. He comes on a safety blitz, number eight. He was up at the line of scrimmage and got to Tui Asasopo in a hurry. But Tui read it, pitched it, and he still got positive yardage. Yeah, Ralph Turner, wasn't he? Uh, he was a quarterback, option quarterback in college. Uh, in high school before he came to college. Second down and a long five. Hand it off. Run it up to about the 25 yard line. They're going to need uh, another three yards after that carry. Talk about running the football. It's been pretty lopsided this half. Washington had had its way for most of it. There's a good indication of it. Well, they just got a wake up call. It's only a 10 point difference right now. Still, you get 179 rushing yards in one half. That's moving the football. Yeah, but they got to go now and get a long three on third down. Otherwise, Purdue's going to get good field position. Toyasa <laughs> Soko kept it. Pitches it back. Oh. And Purdue's got the ball. Bad decision. He doesn't make many of them, Keith, but that definitely was. He was trying to do too much. He felt he was going to be tackled. He felt his pitch man was still with him all the way downfield and pitched it, and it couldn't be handled. So it is Ashante Woodyard who comes up with the loose football, and the Boilermakers have a new life. Boy, when this works, you say, what a great athlete this guy is to have the presence to know his pitch man's still there. But in this instance, when you're just trying to get out of the ball game, Boy, that is a bad decision. It really could have been caught, but the bottom line is it wasn't, and it's a costly turnover and puts Purdue right back into this ball game. Well, you've got your first down. You've got the middle of the field. You've got at least four more snaps to use up another two minutes. Don't need to pitch it at that point. Right. And Purdue's moving. The left tackle dancing. He had uh, he'd gone. Matt Light had gone to the prom right there, and uh, it was very. You can't miss Matt. He's an All-American tackle. And he's at 3:04 out of Greenville, snap. Ohio. Bolt start. And right absolutely. Up, five yards. It's still first down. Charming guy. We talked to him quite some time the other day, and uh, he he was a wrestler in high school, and probably is going to do a lot of playing on Sunday. First down and 15. Pretty great numbers. Swim right to the sidelines. That play's worked all day long. John Standiford this time. Very wisely, he gets out of bounds, stops the clock. 5.26 to play. Ball is put inside the 44 yard line uh, for a second down and three. Derek Johnson. It also stops the clock. He doesn't have to get out of bounds. 519 on the clock. First down. They move the change. The clock stops. Watch this. This is a great read by Tui Asasopo. He read the defense. He saw they were in a two, or breeze, rather. They in a two deep zone coverage. He found his man on the post. Pumps it, goes for the corner. No. Incomplete. Pass again intended for Vinny Sutherland, but he turned inside, lost his footing. Turned outside and lost his footing in the duel with Messi. Still, the incompletion stops the clock. Well, they get a lot of plays, don't they? They sure do. 
Offensive coordinator is Jim Cheney, and uh, you ought to go on the road. He's a funny guy. I said, how difficult is your offense to learn? He says, if a rock had lips, he can tell you how it plays. <laughs> Reese quickly again over the middle of the ball goes almost intercepted. Oh, that wasn't a very good decision either. Look you who it who is. Almost, Look. Yeah, Larry Triplett. They were in a zone blitz. That means Triplett dumps out of there. Breeze wasn't expecting to see Big Triplett, the nose tackle, drop out of there. Here he is right here. Watch, he's going to come back like this. You know, Triplett's 295 pounds. Watch him move. Contact, drop back, almost had the interception. Still chasing it. Well, they've doubled Larry most of the day. They sure have. Handled it. Handled it pretty quiet. First team All American. He'll be playing on Sunday's quality player. Third down and ten. Well, he may go soon, but he's going to think about it after this game's over. Who's pass? He is over the head of the receiver. Incomplete. They're looking at fourth and ten. Omari Lowe defending against Vinnie Sutherland. Lowe's a little bit bigger, 205 and 6 feet. I'd go for the field goal here, Keith. You need 10 points. It's 10 yards for a first. Uh, the, the percentages aren't in your favor. Get out there, get the field goal, come back and get the touchdown later. El Dorch is out there. I'll tell you what, this fella wearing that black hat there, pretty crafty. He knows what he's doing. It's all down to game management now, time management. Ben Smith holding, John Sheldon snapping. Six foot six inch place kicker. Out of leg. And no good. He missed it. Wow. Oh, my. The ebb and flow of the last few minutes of this football game has been incredible. You can't imagine the feeling. Your heart must sink. When you get everything you can into this thing and you're watching it and it's sailing left, left, and you're saying, just hang on, and it goes left by about two yards and then watch Rick Neuheisel on the other side. Yes sir. It's going left. He's a golfer. He knows how those things drift. And so the Huskies hold the Boilermakers to the sidelines. The offense pondering what might have been uh, the defense on the field bone tired but fighting till their last gasp and here's Washington's offense. First down from the 25. Time remaining now is four minutes and 54 seconds and this is Rich Alexis running for a first down over the 35 to the 36 yard line. The freshman from Florida may have a sore shoulder but I'll tell you what he's playing tough. Coming up right after we get through here will be the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl as uh, Oregon State and uh, Notre Dame uh, have at it. In another of the bowl championship series, first time those two teams have ever met. Oregon State lost only one time. That was up in Seattle, and uh, they watched the field goal stay wide right by about three feet. That would have forced a tie in that game. Most speed the Irish have seen all year. Oh, yeah. And here is Alexis bouncing off the pile and coming to the outside and getting to the 40-yard line. He's got four yards on the play where he probably should have been dropped for a loss. After Tui Asasopo turned the ball over in the last offensive position or the possession, Rick Neuheisel, I'm sure, got that offense together and said, hey, look, guys, be smart. Here's the biggest game of your lives. All you have to do now is hold on to the football and we'll get out of here with a win. Very, probably unusual. It's going to be rare if you see Tui Asasopo throw a pass the rest of the way. Alexis has nine carries since he got going in the second half for 77 yards. He's dipping that shoulder and going strong at him, too. Second down and six. This time there's only a yard. Here's Todd. Well, Keith, Coach Rick Neuheisel does not eat before games, even when it's an evening game. I don't know if it goes back to when he was a player here. He came to the Rose Bowl sick as a dog with food poisoning. He walked down the tunnel. He came separate from the team. His dad said, what's wrong? He said, Dad, I'm sick. I got food poisoning. His dad said, so what? This is the biggest game of your life. Get in there. Rick said he went into the field, never felt sick again. We've got three minutes and 27 seconds to play in the football game. Washington fighting to hold on at 34-24. Amy. His director of Amy. product development, oh. Paul Noon. Nice match. Got it. Nortel Networks is building the new high performance internet, the wireless internet, with optical technology overall, that makes it faster. Overall, this has been an exciting and more year. Reliable. But the next few months will mark the beginning of a new. Gesundheit. 
come together in fact with technology changing over me this is a bucket of water and this is Goodyear's new and improved AquaTread 3. At highway speeds in a downpour, a set of AquaTread 3 tires pumps away over six gallons of water per second. That's over 360 gallons per mile. With its 80,000 mile tread life limited warranty, that's a lot of water. Think about it next time it's pouring buckets. New AquaTread 3. Only from Goodyear. Goodyear. It'll be third down and a uh, long four or a short five, however you want to look at it. Rick Neuheisel really didn't want to pass the ball anymore. He might have to here, but only if it's a high percentage pass and there's no chance of an interception. It's more likely that Tui Asisopo will put some pressure on the corner and keep it himself. Huskies can get two more first downs. They can win this football game. If they have to give it up right here, Purdue is still in it. Willie Hurst is the tailback. is handed off to the fullback Pat Conniff and Conniff bangs his way to the 45 and he is one yard short of the first down. Uh, Tui Asasopo wants to go for the first. I think I'd punt it away but he's got Rick Neuheisel's attention. I don't think I would. I would definitely not but uh, Tui Asasopo says he wants to go for it. Rick Neuheisel's leaving him on the field. I don't see a punter out there. Nope. Oh. He had called the he had called the punting team up and Tui Asasopo looked to the side and said we've got to go for it and Rick told those guys to back off he's well he's got uh, six seconds left on the play clock so what they're going to do is right, take spend the, the time out or take the penalty time they're going to take the time out and talk about it and I know that there's a lot of Husky faithful wringing their hands and and uh, shouting and pleading and begging to punt it <laughs> but the punting team's coming and back up the new at least make them go the long way but but with the uh, presence of Drew Brees, you know, a long field doesn't mean that much. And here comes Ryan Fleming, I think. Oh, I Jeremy still have seen him. Jeremy Stevens comes in. He's usually your yeah. Fiesta Bowl with Oregon State and Notre Dame. They're coming up right after we get through. And uh, remember that it was Washington. That inflicted the only loss on the Oregon State Beavers up in Seattle. That's the field goal try that was wide right. With the Huskies leading 33 30, that's the only game the Beavers lost this year. Notre Dame had a remarkable error free season for them. So few turnovers. Very, very efficient football team. About five yards right of an undefeated season. Yep. I think that's going to be a terrific football game. How about this club right here beat Miami and Miami's down there saying hey look we beat Florida State we ought to be number one Well, this club right here at 10 and 1 having beaten Miami's got a claim to something. All right it's fourth and one and here comes a big old I mean this is showing some grit folks. He keeps it he's got it. He's got a first down at midfield and this time he didn't pitch it. And that ought to be your ball game. Well, I tell you what, I remember a long time ago, maybe 1967, at the Gator Bowl down in Jacksonville, when uh, Joe Paterno went on a play similar to that in the middle of the field. Florida State came back and beat him. Ron Sellers and that bunch. I'll tell you this about Marcus Tuiasisopo: he is talented, he is exciting, and sometimes erratic. But what a big play player! So on first down at midfield and the clock running now at 2:10, uh, that may very well have been the ball game. If the Huskies don't turn it over, that play is good for about three yards. And I want to do some credits here. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Executive producer college football John Filippelli. Director of production Bob Toms. Coordinating producer Bob Goodrich. 
The guys I've worked with all season, and I think they're wonderful. Producer Mark Loomis, Patrick McManus is our director, John Zippe, our technical director, associate producer Derek Mobley, associate director is Jeff Kibler, technical manager Dennis Zabo, production manager Joe Alvarado, our assistants to the producer Jason Chavico, Tom Wicks, statistician Mark Cometto, Kelly Hayes, Mark and Kelly, Kelly our spotter, Mark and Kelly having just come back from the NFL playoffs, computer stats Brian Shiroto and uh, Freddie Amos. And our stage manager, Dave Hatter. I've been doing college football for 48 seasons, and I don't know that I've ever enjoyed one more than this year. I'll tell you this, partner, it's been fun for me, too, and Happy New Year to you. Thanks for Thank everything you. this season. Timmy Brandt and Todd Harris pleasantly working the sidelines today. No snow, no ice, and no heat. And a good job. Purdue takes that timeout, Keith, and they've got one remaining. As you mentioned, it is a high hill to climb now. For uh, Joe Tiller's staff, Ken Green, uh, Mark Hagan, Greg Olson, Scott Downing, Brock Speck, Jim Cheney we mentioned, Danny Hope, Kevin Sumlin, Gary Emanuel. Brought an entertaining, interesting football team to the Rose Bowl. Had a good time. And this is Willie Hurst running to the outside. And a big ball game for Willie coming home to perform. And he's picked up another first down for Washington. And for the Washington Huskies, Rick Neuheisel with staff, Keith Gilbertson and Tim Hundley, Chuck Heater, Steve Axman, Brent Myers, Randy Hart, Wayne Moses, Bobby Hawk, and Tom Williams. Another outstanding coaching job. Going to go 11 and 1. This is a team winning this ball game today that will finish the season 11 and 1, and they beat the Miami Hurricanes. So we could have a split championship. I mean, the Associated Press is not committed to the BCS poll. The uh, coaches poll is. And this is Willie Hurst bouncing around again and picking up a couple of yards. Minute and a half left, and of course, they're still running as hard as they possibly can, melting that clock and getting out of here with their Rose Bowl championship. Very, very disappointing game for Purdue. But if you look at the, the quarterback comparison, and certainly they were the guys that everybody was talking to coming in and talking about coming into this ball game terrific game by both of these quarterbacks you see the minus 25 down here though two sacks he was tackled two other times for big losses when he was trying to scramble both of the quality guys that'll be playing on Sunday matter of fact Gil Brandt Keith told me that uh, he thinks Drew Brees is the same as Peyton Manning on a three inches short well uh, Brees and Manning spent some time together. I guess that, uh, 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 Peyton, in some sense, has become sort of a mentor for uh, for young Brees. Clock ticking along now. 35 seconds, and now it's a matter of just running it out. And the flash bulbs are popping. And Rick Neuheisel has been drenched, and uh, he was trying to avoid <laughs> it, but he had no chance. They had him right in their sights and nailed him. Yeah, but you know that that bath there is not nearly as hard to take as those ones when it is frigid and snowing like it was last night down in Louisiana. And you know what? There's a guy back in Indiana, Bart Burrell, who is watching tonight. Had there it is. A good football game, and he's got his health back, and he's one of the happiest guys in the world. We'll return with the new Ford Escape Post Game Show after this message. 34-24 for Washington.